Yeah. Marinate the hog and fire up the grill. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Guys, before we begin, I want to let you know that we are newly brought to you by Mack Weldon. Big shout out to Mack Weldon. They're reinventing men's basics with the comfort and style that you deserve. Uh, so for 20% off your order, visit MacWeldon.com slash go deep and a pro promo code go deep dude mac weldon that sounds sort of like football player yeah that's not that sounds like a guy that would date olivia culpa is he yeah. always a one take on those yeah oh yeah it's unbelievable he's unbelievable oh dude <laughs> i never had any he's doubt the best in the business yeah it yeah. really is just one take chat dude thank you it's really good that just fired me up one more ad uh we gotta remind you guys once again that we are brought to you by manscape manscape thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed for looking after our hogs you got Bush. You definitely do if you haven't tried the best products from our sponsor, Manscaped. I'm looking out for you, too, because I also have an exclusive 20% off discount. Use code GoD20, Manscaped.com. I'm here with my compadre, John Thomas. What up? Boom clap, stokers. And we are here with our new guest, the charisma himself, Appreciate Bobby that. B. Uh, brilliant, dumb. Brilliantly dumb on Instagram. You guys know him. You love him. Robbie Berger, what up? I, I tell you, fellas, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're running this back. I, I think yeah. we walked yeah, we did out your of the show. studio. Yeah. 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 yeah, you guys came on to my show, and we walked out of there, and I think we all knew that we were going to run this back. Yeah. We were connected. Yeah, there was something going on. We, I think we even said it on the podcast. We said, there's something going on here. There's something in the alchemy. Instant fireworks. It was like an explosion. I, I mean, we were talking about, you know, bringing it back i'm just I, I, I in my mind i'm like i'm pretty sure we're going to create a new genre for sure yeah. for sure and look where we are today yeah we're yeah. Doing there was it. just something real special going on in there totally I, I said even from the time we started too we knew there was some there and usually sometimes it carries over into the podcast room and you don't know if that's going to keep flowing and it just mm. kept coming totally well that, that makes me wonder were you always that guy I'm very comfortable. You know, I'm always having a, I'm usually having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, I'm able to kind of carry it on into the podcast. And that's what I love about podcasts too. You could just go and you just let it fly. Yeah. But see, I picture you like you're seven years old and you're that same person. Not much has changed. And you're kind of like, you, people are coming over and you're kind of this conduit for a good free flow and hang. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think that's safe to say. You gave me the best compliment I think I've ever received mm. when you said that you compared me to Howard Stern. I, like, I feel that as far as just making you guys comfortable until this day, like that just hit really good with me. I mean, that's as good as it gets right there. That's well, a great compliment. It really is because yeah. Stern could just loosen you up right out of the gate. I don't think I've ever felt something that that deep. Well, I, well yeah, when we talked to Howard, I mean, it, it was. He, 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 as soon as you he, he he locks you into the zone and you just feel open you're like all right i'm gonna tell you everything even though you got a huge audience and i had that same with you i mean you, you just walk in the door and it's just like i think too with like the people that come on stern they just know when they go in there that there's nothing off limits that mm -hmm. he's just gonna let he's gonna say whatever he's got to say and you just kind of he's built that reputation out i think that's you a big know. part of it yeah mm -hmm. you guys big a little nervous going into that Oh, I thought you were gonna ask me if I'm nervous right now. It's like a bit. Are you a little nervous right yeah, now? Yeah, a little bit. You'll settle in though. <laughs> Absolutely. It looks like you're settled in. This is a comfortable seated position yeah. I'm in right here. I like to play with my toes, much yeah. to the uh, chagrin of some of the viewers. You pick your toes. I do. I do all the time. That's how I keep them. I've, I've never ever clipped my nails. And look, I've talked about this the other day. They look pretty good, right? Just from right. Would you rather pick, would you rather pick the toes or go go for the the hand nails? Uh. In ordinary life, I'm more with the fingers, and on the pod, I'm more with the toes. Gotcha. Gotcha. The toes, though, are kind of like a... Because I pick my nails, too. The toes are a treat. You, you kinda, For sure. You, you, give, you give the toes one to two weeks, you got some growth on there, and you just go to town. I mean, it's... it's I love going too, and like you know when it's prime picking season. Mm -hmm. I like going for the big toe. Oh. But it, it takes so long to grow to yeah. where it takes a while to where you could really go down you gotta at be it. Patient. Yeah. You, you ever do it in the shower? You ever pick your toes in the shower? I've never done that. Yet. I don't know when I'm picking them. 
It's oh, you so, don't. I, it's so subconscious. You do it in the shower, and what's interesting with the shower pick is that it kind of softens it up a little bit. Mm. Right. So it's an easier it's an easier pick to mm. where it's a little oh. more damp. Mm. You know what I mean? This is what else I love about you. You have like an <clears throat> expert kind of uh, attitude towards everything. Yeah, a lot it's, of times just ridiculous stuff like that. It's a little bit like when Tom Cruise is in the in the Last Samurai and he's living with the samurai. And he's like, they live every day with a meticulous dedication to every task. <laughs> That's how I see you. Like when you order a coffee, I think you go in there and you know exactly what you're getting in that coffee. Yeah. You know, it's funny, even when like I went to go get the coffee and it's right on your guy's block, everybody walk it on your guy's block as Starbucks coffee in them. It's like mm. that, that was the spot to go. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like everybody that comes here too stops at that Starbucks. The one on Melrose right yeah. here? It's a good Great spot. Starbucks, by the way, too. Great. You've been traveling, huh? Traveling hitting the, hitting the links? Tra- hitting the links, You're, a lot of golf. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of in, in the stage now. I used to always have my mom would book my flights. Right. Now I kind of want to get to the rewards program where there's going to be a lot of yeah. more traveling coming up to where I kind of want to, I'm in the market for an airline. Yeah. To where, yeah, I, I kind of want to lock something in. Um, and I just don't know what airline to lock in. Oh, so you're surveying which one? If you one's guys best go, you, you guys go traveling. What what airline are you doing? I mean, typically Southwest, but you're a it, Southwest it, guy. Yeah, but you know, if I I like what you're saying because I could see you dominating the captain suite or whatever they call it, the executive suite. Um, I just out of pure intuition, I'd say Delta. Yep. Um, you got a lot of flights with Delta. Yeah. And again, I'm looking into Del- it now, being in the market. Like, you got a lot of flights with Delta, so you want something that you have a lot of flights. Mm-hmm. The only thing I have with the Southwest mm-hmm. is it's a free for all. When you guys go to board, it's a free for all. There's no assigned seatings, no? Yeah. Does and that I, stress you out a little bit, he Chad? Loves it. Me? Do I, 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 I mean, know. honestly, not really. Uh, but it's just, che- I mean, it's just cheap. That's the only thing. Fair. I love a scrum. You do you love, love it? I love the scrum. Yeah. Let's get in there. It's elbow. Let me ask you something. So they go to tell you that you guys are boarding. Do you go up right away or do you sit and let it marinate? I sit for a second just to get myself into the proper headspace. Yep. And then I get up with just bad intentions. I love that about you. Mm-hmm. You ever skip if you're boarding group four, you go up when they say boarding group three? Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed to say I don't have much... Uh, fealty to the rules I'm, I'm playing by my own rules i respect that about you though i really do and, and i expect the same from everybody else yeah yeah and then even when when the flight lands are you the guy that gets up or do you wait till it's actually time to get i want to get out first you do so mm-hmm. you're up and adam you grab your bag and then wait i'm trying gotcha yeah what about you i get up and then i kind of get upset at the other people that get up even though that i'm already standing up um but yeah I mean, look, we'll see. I, I found with, with JetBlue, people are a lot Ooh. more calm to I, wear. I always forget about JetBlue. JetBlue's spectacular. You yeah. get a lot of, lot of leg room. Yeah. And then I think a total game changer on a flight now is in-flight Wi-Fi. Mm. Oh, yeah. They got to have it. Some, some flights, it's like it just doesn't work. You know, it can be hit. They and have it, but they don't have it. And you lose your mind. Yeah. Dude, no I, qu- I, I, the TV I, systems aren't working. I opt not. I never connect to the Wi-Fi. Come on, you you, you really of, don't go to the Wi-Fi out of principle because I, it's it's like it's like the one time where you can truly disconnect. And I'm like, I don't want to. I, I respect bring that. Wi-Fi into the air. You know, I, like it's like the one time where I can read a book and yeah. like actually read a book and like read like twenty thirty pages without you know checking Hinge. If, if I they, do my best texting up in the sky though. Really? Yeah interesting it's such a good take because i do too it gives me the you're b- locked in at that time you're locked in i've never been better in a group chat or whatever than when i'm in the air oh very interesting yeah and because you got nowhere else to be you can just settle into it totally and, and i'm just multiple text threads just bang 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 oh, that's really interesting you ever get yeah. overwhelmed by text messages there. Absolutely. Mine, mine pile up. It does. I got like 500 on red right now. See, that, that, that would stress me out. It would stress me out to have to respond to all of them. Yeah. But I leave some hangers on there. But do you go through your day thinking to yourself like, wow, I got to get back to that guy or like, wow, like I'm, I'm missing that? No. Because I let them pile up a little bit too, but then throughout the day I'm thinking like, oh shit, like I really got to get to that text message or get back to that You, you get back to him? Eventually. I do. I, I, I do. I'm a big phone call guy, too. I think mm. there's a lot more you could do in a phone call mm. or something that I think is huge now that I love 
I love a good audio message. Mm. I was going to hit you on audio message today, but I didn't want to stress you out. That wouldn't have stressed me out. Not at all. Or no, you would have been alarmed, that. like, why is he doing the audio message? No, because maybe, maybe I wait to check it. True. Yeah. I didn't really think about that. Chad, do you do audio message? Yeah, I never, I never do, I never do voice to chat. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I, I think I've, I, I never do Siri. I think I, I think I'm slow to, to get into the, I don't know. Maybe it's like in a, maybe it's a natural sort of weariness or, or not weariness, sort of like a natural um, uneasiness about getting too deep into the technology. I guess. I, I feel like you got a good relationship with your phone, though. Uh it's, it's. I, I'm on it a lot. Yeah, I'm on it a lot. I, it can be pretty compulsive. Yeah, but especially I'm on the dating apps now, so I'm just like, you know. Can I ask you one more thing, Chad? Yeah, yeah. It's not to put you on a spot or anything, but I'm curious. What what what's your, what's your screen time looking like? Dude, uh, a week. Yeah. Our uh, average six six hours. Okay. Six a and week. Half. No, I You're think daily. Per day. Oh, a day. Day. Right. Daily. Right. Day. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. I got mine at nine. You're at nine. I'm at nine. Oh, dude. Yeah. How do you feel about it? It, it, you know what? I'm glad you asked. Um, I, 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 honest to God, I, I, I think it's something I'm very. Uh, it, it, it worries me to where I think, okay, you do got to bring it down a little bit. But I think you, with your social media and stuff, with your, with your stories and stuff, it, it's, ve- it's so natural and it's very. You're able to, to, to put your, your personality into your content yeah. so easily. You just have that. Some people just have that ability. That so, makes me feel better just knowing that it's like it's it's my job. I mean, yeah. you guys, you could always say, okay, it's it's my job to a degree. So I think that helps me put in a little bit better headspace. But when they give you that notification of what the screen time is, sometimes yeah. it's definitely concerning. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it's I don't know why they put that in there because you, you get on the, on Sundays and you're like, the fuck Apple. Yeah, did you, like was that to like did you think i feel like screen time it's a very personal question it's kind of asking like you know how much do you make a year or something like it's a very personal thing did you find that to be a personal question i, I did yeah it but, is but it's from a, you you know i'll take yeah. any question because we're personal. so comfortable with yeah ask yeah. me personal shit yeah. let's yeah. go i wanted to get that out i really did dude thank you jt what are you at i think i'm at like nine or ten hours a day really i'm on it all the time yeah, yeah. But I appreciate you being open about it. It's that. an extension of me. I mean, like, you know, they design these products to feel like they're part of your body. Yeah. And I feel that way. And you get I the don't 9, stress 10, you, you don't, that doesn't bother you at all? No. Good for you. Good for you. It's such a good mental headspace. I, I think also what it does is, is like, I, and maybe I wouldn't be this way if I wasn't so addicted to my phone, but when I'm talking to people, I can get, you know, I'm sensitive. I'm feeling every word that I'm getting from people. So sometimes it can be overwhelming. I just go to my phone real quick and then I get a, a nice little moment for me and then I tap back in. You know what I mean? I will say uh, being friends with you guys for some time now, uh, honest to God, you can always tell if somebody's a good texter about text. You guys are very good texters. Oh, dude, thank you. With yeah. emotion, you put ha ha ha's in there. You guys are enthusiastic in the text messages and I appreciate it. Chad one time, he's like, hey, you been feeling all right? I was like, I was like, I think I'm good. He's like, he's like, you seem a bit down. I was like, you know what? I have been a bit down. He's like, yeah, no exclamation points this morning when you texted me. <laughs> yeah, JT usually has five. <laughs> but you true. do, you, you find such a cadence in people's text messages and then you have such a good understanding of them to where yeah. if they don't bring that same level of energy or that same amount of ha-has or something like that, it does, it does worry you. Yeah. And if you know them so well, I got energy, I, I, you can just, I, I can feel his energy in each text and it's, it's, it, it, it's so, <laughs> through the text I can feel how JT's feeling. It's crazy. But then there's like people who, and I think a lot of people do, you know, I think it's sort of the alpha male mentality to where they're like, I got to give one word answers. Yes. I'm, I'm busy. I'm on the go. I'm an alpha male, you know? And, but to me, it's just rude, you know? And you're like, this is not like, they'll just be like, what the simple, okay. I'm like, are you just going to okay me? It's brutal. Brutal. Yeah. To where I'd rather you not even respond. It, it, yeah. Instead of the okay, I think a, a great alternative option is to like it. Now you yeah. have the option to like such it. Such a nice, nice such feature. A, such a better, it's a great, great feature. Mm-hmm. Totally. To where I just think as an alternative, if you're going to do okay, scratch the okay, click it with the like. I think you would appreciate just the like more than the okay, no? Totally. Yeah. Or, I, you know, I, I, a, heart, a heart means a lot. 
Hearts are you great. Know, yeah. So uh, someone gave me the thumbs up, and I was just like, mm, yeah, put a, put a little more effort in there. What about when someone sends you like a salvo? You know, they hit you with like seven, and then yeah. you go through the individual text and hit them with different responses. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You give one a heart, you give one a thumbs up, you give one an exclamation point. Huge. It it's it, it really is. It's an incredible feature that that they added. Mm -hmm. It's really smart. So so uh, where'd you grow up? Grew up in New Jersey. Which part of Jersey? Morse County, so like more North Jersey. Where is what what is that near Princeton or Trenton or where are we talking? Hoboken. I think Pr Princeton would be a little bit south, kind of in the Hoboken area. But then once I in Jersey was great, but once I came out here, I mean I fell in love with it. How long you been out here? Been out here three years now. Nice. You're like, pretty new. Pretty new, yeah. But I, I just am in such a, a a groove out here. Like, I just really, really love it to where I don't see... As much as I love New Jersey, I don't see me going back hmm. anytime soon. Yeah. You're a California guy. I'm a California guy. I may yeah. not sound like a California guy. And, you know, you guys look, talk, walk like California guys. I don't have that. That's okay. Because you got Los Angeles. You could head up to so many different areas where, uh, you know, I just don't see me leaving California for the longest time. You nice. have the energy. Yeah. You got the energy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, New York, and I love New York. I love tri-state area. Yeah. But it's a, it's a different energy. Totally. Right? I, th I think you, you probably stood out Yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah. Where you're like, and then, but you're like why here, are you smiling so much? Yeah, people, yeah. They don't, they're not big on the whole smiling as much. They're, yeah. they're more pedal to the metal. Um, and I'm just, I'm never in a rush. Pedal to the metal. Is that a Jersey phrase? Yeah, it is. My dad always used to say Does that. he? Is yeah. He, now, is he a uh, Northeast guy? He's from Princeton. Oh, okay. That's why you came right to Princeton. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Hopewell, specifically. But How yeah. long did he live there for? Till he was like 18. He got on the road pretty quick. And then now, was he out here? He's out. No, he's in Montana now, but he was in California for 30 years. New Jersey, California to Montana? Mm-hmm. That's an interesting trio right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I, I, I tell you, I love it out here. I'm so happy. Yeah. I really am. You are a really happy guy. You know, I'll be honest with you, JT, I don't have a lot of b bad days. That's crazy. How do you do it? I, look, there's shitty things that come up, but I just overall, I, I'd like to think I got a, a really positive outlook on it. I'd rather be happy than mad. Now, did you mm -hmm. build that or was that always there? It was always there. Mm. So if I look at all your like uh, school photos of the yeah. whole class. Robbie's just ear to ear grinning at each one. Go to Randolph High School, class of 2011. Uh, most likely to brighten your day is me. <laughs> they gave it to you. They gave it to me. You got the most likely. Most give me some there, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That was probably a landslide. Yeah, I, I, I uh, it was a big accomplishment. I'm sure the girl next to you in like the superlative picture. I bet you she looks dour in comparison. Well, you know what? She was a she was a happy girl, but there's been some days where I caught her where she wasn't happy. Um, so I understood her winning, but at the same time, I've caught her on some bad days. Mm. But I mean, yeah, it was, a, it was, a, I've kind of always been that way. I'm just, a, you know, is your family the same? Yeah. My, my, uh, the, so no. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. My yeah. sister and brother, one's a doctor yeah. and then one's in the army. So right. they're like a little more serious. And then there's me. Um, are you the youngest? I'm the youngest. I can feel that. Yeah, yeah. you could, huh? Yeah. It's a, and it's a, it's an interesting dynamic, you know, growing up with them, and then we're just totally different people. Not to say that they're not happy, but they're just like more serious, kind of by the book. That's kind yeah. of your dynamic too, right? Yeah, similar. I, I, I'm the I'm the fifth child, um, and so uh, you know, older siblings are. My parents are a lot tougher on the older three. Yeah, that's usually the way it goes. I feel like. Yeah, and then once once it came to me, I I, I just kind of a, just a little spoiled prince, but happy. Yeah, you know, good you know good relationship with my parents, and then I just you know just go with the flow kind of thing. Now, what do they think about your career? Like everything that's happened to you. Uh, well, my dad encouraged me to go into entertainment. Yeah. Uh, when I was in college, I was like, uh, I, I I always wanted to be an actor, but I never really had the confidence to say like. I want to go into comedy, acting, whatever, I, you know, just because, like, I, I come from a pretty serious background, you know, like, my grandparents are all doctors, and it's just, education's, like, the main thing, and um, my dad sort of saw that in me, because he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, yeah, I want to go be a producer, 
Like I had any idea. I had no idea what that meant. You know, I just thought I was like, oh, that's something I can do where it's in entertainment, but people, you know, who take education seriously or whatever will or jo- career seriously will think it's respectable. But my dad's like, oh, I think you should go into like acting. And then so I, as soon as I got that from him, I was just like, like full speed ahead. I feel like half yeah. of like wanting to be an actor is is just saying like I'm, I'm an actor, like owning it and saying I'm an actor. I feel like that's yeah. almost half the battle right there. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, it's it's odd if someone owns it right away. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, like those theater kids in high school. God bless them, but it always kind of like freaked me out a little bit. I was like, totally. how, do you, how do you? You're already an actor? I was like, you're like 17. Right. I was yeah. like, yeah, it was just odd to me. But then I, for me, it was the same thing. I was like. Yeah. I started off, I was like, I'm going to be a documentary filmmaker. Right, right, right. Because it sounded more serious and substantial. <laughs> yeah. And then everyone I would meet in like film school and stuff was like, you're kind of a goofball. Why don't you get in front of the camera? I was like, no, I'm a very serious thinker. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm interested in big topics. <laughs> yeah. And illuminating them with infotainment. Yeah. And then, uh, and then as slowly I was like, no, I think I'm, you know, I'm more of a... Uh, I almost feel like two people are kind of, kinda, of maybe not afraid, but hesitant to say it because I feel like... If you say like out here if in LA, like I'm an actor or, or you know, want to be an agent or something like that, people just give you like, oh yeah, like everybody else, you know, in California. Whereas in New Jersey, if you say, oh, I'm an actor or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm an agent, I work for CAA, it holds a lot of weight. It's mm-hmm. such a grind out there and there's so many people trying to do it out here mm-hmm. that I, I feel like they may look at it in, in a different light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so do, do, when did you uh, decide that you were going to be like a, a presenter, a actor? A I, for me, I was um, I was working. I was always going to be in hospitality. So I came out to Los Angeles to be in hotel management. Mm. And um, I loved it because I loved I would sit out on the driveway. I was like a services manager and just talk all day. Mm. Like I could just go. You have people coming in and out, new faces, all different places of the world. Everybody's got their own situation. Everybody's got something going on. Um, you know, at night you see some crazy shit working at the hotel. But I just always loved doing that. And then I was just doing Instagram and stuff on the side. It was never like, you know, oh, I'm going to be a comedian or entertainer, whatever it is. Um but then it just it just started to grow a little bit, mm. and then it was pretty crazy. Like you know, you're working, and then you know, I've I've employees too that you gotta you're at the Four Seasons, you gotta act serious and shit like that. But then they see me doing videos and stuff like that, and some people would come, they recognize you, and it got a little bizarre. But then at that time, I was like, holy shit, I might be able to make a career out of this. Mm. Um, and then at that at the time, pretty much all within the same month. Bro Bible and Barstool came to me about doing it full time. And that's when I was like, holy shit, I could really do this full time. So are you at the Four Seasons in LA? In Beverly Hills, yeah. Okay, so you're getting some heavy hitters coming through, some entertainment types. For sure. So you're like thinking about doing this when like someone like, I don't know, like Kevin Hart comes through or David Spade, I don't know. Yeah. Are you like, all right, let me test my chops against this guy. And see if I can keep up. Yeah, hundred percent. And and you have so many different faces coming in. You got big time people. It's at the Four Seasons, Beverly Hills, to where yeah, you start to realize like I can hang. Like mm. I, you know, you go, you have a conversation with some big time guys, and you're out there having a ball for 20, 30 minutes talking. Their car's already waiting there, but they want to still and keep talking to you. And yeah, you do think to yourself like I might be able to hang. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's it's just it, it's it's bizarre, and at the same time, it just helps your people skills so much because every hour of the day, you know, when you're a manager, you got to be there ten, twelve hours, and you're there, and you're just out there talking to people all day. So you just take in so much, you meet so many different people, and then yeah, there's all these different celebrities that you see, and it's so cool. Mm. So how were you always happy there too? Oh yeah, I I was it just nonstop, just bouncing off the walls. My problem was it, being a manager again. You got to kind of be serious, and you got to maintain that level of. I couldn't. I was just you know I was always <laughs> goofing around and yeah. having fun and laughing with my employees and all of that to where they did get a little worried you know about me toning it down or becoming you know a big thing for me was I was becoming too buddy buddy with the employees, which I always thought was a little ridiculous because to me is. I was so tight with them to where if you ask them to do something, if you're in a gym and you need them to do something, they're going to do something for you and want to do it for you to help you out. Right. So that was my, always my mentality with it. Get as close with them as possible and, and 
have a really good relationship with them. And then when again, when I was in a jam or you needed something, there's a lot of good good parts to working at the hotel. There's always a lot of shitty parts too. You have a people who are used to never say, you know, they never get said no to and they scream at you and you get to, you know, you just got to bite your tongue wrong or right, you know, and just take it on the chin. Hmm. That's awesome that you felt like you could motivate people through, um, through them feeling indebted to you out of friendship rather than having to do it from like a, uh, kind of authoritative position. Totally. Or because like, you know, running out of off like fear or like, you know, anything like that, or just being a prick, like it just was never, I mean, yeah, of course you had those managers who were just, they love to, to be the top dog and, you know, instill fear and like their employees, stuff like that, that, that was never me. Mm. But sometimes, you know, the, the higher ups would, would look, cause they could pretty much, there was all these executive office up top and they could see down onto the driveway and they would just see me, you know, goofing off, slapping fives and shit like that. But that was always the way I just liked to do things. Yeah. I think that's smart because uh, like with dog training and stuff, the whole, uh, the paradigm has shifted because before it was sort of like, you got to dominate your dog. And, and <laughs> I'm learning about this, you know, you just got to establish dominance. And But now they're learning that, that that just puts the dog in a perpetual state of fear. So it's just like, you know. <laughs> it's amazing the way that, that that world's changed too. Yeah. And then your brother's in the army? Brother's in the army. So do you guys ever like compare and contrast like uh, kind of uh, methodologies for that stuff? In like, a way, yeah, because again, he even too would just do things so much differently. Like mm-hmm. he's that guy, much more serious, by the book and stuff like What's that. What's his rank in the... Uh, he's a captain. Okay. Yeah. So, so, he, so he's, he's running a squad too. He's running a squad. He's running a squad for and sure. Is he doing it through like loosey-goosey vibes? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I think if you go out there, you're not going to see him slapping, you know, high fives and shit like that. And it just goes to show just how different, you know, that we are. And then, you know, in the army, I don't even think you could really take that route to a degree to where you're that loose. Would be interesting. It would. So was he with you like growing up? Would he be like, hey, you need to like be like more dialed in. I need you to be like, because with my younger brother, I would sometimes he'd be more relaxed about stuff and we'd be like weightlifting and I'd be like, Hey, where's your intensity, bro? I like, I was like, come on, you gotta be pissed. Lift this weight. And he was like already stronger than me. So it wasn't even like I was, I had like the bona fides to be screaming at him like this, yeah. but I would get pissed and I'd be like, come on, man, like be more pissed off. I was like, like, where's your killer instinct? He's like, bro, we're weightlifting in the garage. Like, yeah, I, I think he was like that to a degree till he then realized like okay this is just the way he is this is how he's going to be we're that different of people but yeah growing up in the beginning for sure Mm -hmm. to where i always felt like i was doing something wrong right you know Uh, what i mean yeah totally it's it's a it's a bizarre dynamic to be that much different i mean you said i mean my brother you know he he, he, i mean growing up he'd be like you know he'd just be all right today we're gonna go chainsaw a tree you know, and I'd be like, I, I want to go surf. He's like, this isn't dog town, okay? He's like, you need to do manly activities. You need to work on my car, you know? And he just constantly trying to get me to be like, this way, you know? It's still to this day, he's like, you need to buy a gun, you know? And I'll, I'll, like, I'll like FaceTime him and he'll have, he'll, his whole carpet will just be littered with like clips. He's like, he's like, I'm putting bullets in my clips right now. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a gun guy. I'm just like, I'm not... I don't. I don't think I would like having a gun in the house. And he's like, "Wait till you have a kid." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm like, whatever, dude." Um, so I totally relate to that. But he 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 accepts me, you know. But he's still kind of just like, "You need to fucking." It's funny with the gun community, they always try and recruit guys into that community. Yeah, and, and there's really no middle ground with the guns. You either you either want a gun, or you don't want a gun. Yeah, there's really not much convincing that you're going to do to get a gun. Yeah. I grew up shooting guns. Did you? My family had a lot of guns. For for Christmas one time, my dad got my brother and me an AR-15. And How remember, old were you at the time? Like 17 or 18, maybe 19. Yeah. And my mom was horrified. <laughs> She's like, it's Jesus's birthday. Why are we getting machine guns? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have my brother and me were like, yes. <laughs> Do you yes. have a certain spot where you guys would keep the guns? That's the thing. They're 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 in Wyoming. They're not in California. And is it in a safe? It is in a safe, but if I'm being totally candid, the, the lock on the safe is uh, hit and miss when it comes to use. Gotcha. It's dangerous. We shouldn't even have all those guns. 
I but was, a lot of fun to shoot him. A lot of fun to shoot him. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of an adrenaline rush, no? Totally. The way we experienced nature was like we would appreciate it, but we were mostly dominating it. We were shooting mm. guns, riding dirt bikes. <laughs> you know, it was always like some kind of aggressive form of a uh, of a uh, interaction. See, to me, the thing about the guns, a lot of people get a gun in case they have an intruder or something like that. My thing that I almost feel like is. By the time you get to the gun, wherever it is, it's always in some sort of safe space. The intruder's already in and did whatever he had you're to done. do. Yeah. To where it's not like the gun's usually just on your hip while you're sleeping. You could pull that thing out and let it ride. I always feel like it's always locked up in a safe, in the attic, right. in the basement to where it's not on hand. Am I wrong there with that? No, I think that's probably true. I know some people who are more like on ready the hip. to go with it. Or they have it in a place where they can get to it quick. Right. Like my my ex's friend was in like a, a one of the bad shootings that happened, and so he had a gun with him at all times because he was a little traumatized. I don't blame him. No, right? Yeah, exactly. It was a uh, it was very understandable. He was like well trained with it. You know, he could draw and shoot and like very quickly and and efficiently. Yeah, if something like that, I mean, it's like shit. I might yeah. turn into a gun guy if something like that ever happened to me or ever you're close to that. Yeah. But it's funny what you said too, Chad. It's like people they they always gun people want it. They're always recruiting. Yeah, and I I've never had that mentality of like, what if someone breaks in? I never think about that ever. Which oh, see, is, I do. Which might be a fault because I think about it all the time. All the time. I don't. I never. It, you know, like, what are you gonna do for security? I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. I'll forget to lock the doors. I shouldn't say this because people come by. Just, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just never. I don't know, I just always, I guess I always, and it's super naive, but I always just figure it's all good. Well, but even, it's like the chances are someone's probably not going to break in. And I think yeah. you're just trying to have the mindset that's going to make you feel best. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, who, who's, who's the happier person? The person who's worried about someone breaking in all the time? Yeah. And is over prepared for it? Or the person who's not worried about it at all? Yeah. It's sort of like being a prepper too, you know? Like, I, I highly respect preppers, you know? But I, I just figure, you know, if the apocalypse comes, you know? There's a nuclear blast. I'm going to go stand as close to it as possible and just get destroyed. Jez, yeah, it's going to be deep. But <laughs> what, 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 what worries you? I mean, when you think what about your biggest worry, what would you, what, what's something that really, really roared? What troubles you? I think the two things I worry about the most are probably my parents and career stuff. I always just want to keep moving forward career-wise. Um, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I, I just, I just want to keep... I, I just like progression. So I, like, I always like to feel like I'm progressing. It's a phenomenal uh, answer. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I, I just, I love my parents, so my family. It's, yeah. It's so, a really good answer. It's really what good. about you? Yeah. Honestly, I like the answer so much that, yeah, I, I think my parents is definitely something. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. Even, even career-wise, too. I would probably hit those. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Something that I think about you daily, you know what I mean? Yeah. That I worry about daily, I would say it's right on the nose. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I, I don't like feeling like the feeling of being stalled. Yeah. I, I And I don't know. I, I love creating just, you know, where you just sort of like, yeah, I don't, I don't get much from like socializing and stuff. You guys get creative when you smoke pot? I do. I do too. But do you find that the creative zone for me, like if I smoke weed, I smoke a joint, right? The creativity, my mind for the first 30 minutes, 30, maybe 45 minutes is off the charts. Mm -hmm. It's a great 30, 45 minutes. But then I have a little bit of a come down on it to where then I get a little tired. But I always want to keep chasing that 30 to 45 minutes where it's the most creative part like a lot of stuff with the podcast stuff like that has all come from that 30 to 45 mm -hmm. minutes do you get the come down of the weed mm -hmm. you do yeah and sometimes it'll not make me creative it'll shut me down a little bit yeah i don't think it's i've never found anything that works all the time you know so there's, there's variance to to all of it but no yeah i'll get high and the the ideas will just start flowing i, I try to use it like kind of not quite break in case of emergency but it's like when i hit a wall Yep. Then I'll hit it and something will pop. And I think you just got to switch up your, you're just trying to switch up your point of view, right? Or like you're trying to switch up your perspective on it. You're like, all right, I've been thinking about it this way for a while. It's not working. 
All right, let me do something else and see if I can see it from another angle. Totally. And it often does work. Yeah, I like that too. When you hit a wall or you just don't have much going to where like you can't think of anything, mm. you smoke a joint and it's like a totally, it's like a clean slate, mm -hmm. you know? It really is. Yeah. I, I'll do, I, I, I was doing a lot of mushrooms. I had to slow down because I was going to like, you know, live in a tree house or something like that. But I was, that, that helps too. It does, it's huh? A little more heavy duty. i never done mushrooms. No? no, I've done them like once, maybe a while ago, but not enough to where I. I mean, I feel I'll, like I'll I'd toss be, you a handful before you come. Yeah, in here. I feel yeah. I'd be a big mushroom guy. You're gonna have a hell of a Monday. It's, it's fun. I really do. Yeah, it's fun. you'd be amazing at it, uh, dude. I would love to see brilliantly dumb. Do you like being called brilliant dumb or Robbie Berg? Yeah, what, what's the, what's your way to prefer? Way? Okay, I'd love to see you do an ayahuasca ceremony or something. Like, I've never done ayahuasca, so you know, I'm. I'm recommending something that i don't know about but i think you doing one of those and filming on it that could be amazing i think that would be wild yeah, yeah. I, i've never really gotten in but and i want to that's the thing it's never never been against it you know yeah. what i mean i want shit i want to do it you, you don't you, do you don't do you have friends who do ayahuasca or no. you look you're, so you're looking for your crew to do ayahuasca with yeah I, well it could be that it could be yes. right here this could, Costa Rica. Really be could be right here this could really be something go to jamaica us do three some doing ayahuasca therapy. together because you be you know you don't want to do shrooms with everyone but doing them with you i have no doubts because if you do it with the wrong guy it could end up being a really bad trip mm. that's what they say yeah 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 no, mm -hmm. I think I would bring a lot of energy for you guys. I, I could see you just sort of reassuring us, like, this is good. Yeah, this is good, guys. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> I'm tripping balls. I, yeah. I, I, I was afraid to do them because I was like, oh, I'm going to... A lot of people, I think, are afraid to do them because they're like, and, you know, be safe. If you don't want to do them, don't do them. But I was afraid that I would find this inner darkness in myself that would scare me. Like, I was like, oh, no, I'll get to the root of me and it'll be a person I don't like. Yep. And then the first time I did them, I got to the root and I was like... I'm stoked. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, actually, the, the darkness is above the inner me, and the inner me is a fired up little gorilla. <laughs> and once I got in touch with that, I was like, okay. Yeah, it was, it was actually really nice. Yeah, so you do figure out, like, you, you figure out a lot of shit about yourself. I, I I didn't. It wasn't like I was. Like, yeah, yeah. You do. You do. I've I've had a lot of trips like that where I'm like, oh, I do this because of this reason, and I'm actually reacting to this thing that happened earlier in my life, and that kind of made me believe that the world worked this way when it really doesn't. That's just a way that I'm telling myself. And it then works. when the trip's over, you still remember what you. There's what some residual benefit. Out. Mm -hmm. I think we got to do shrooms, boys. Yeah, I really do. I don't think I've ever had a, a deep ther therapeutic sort of. Uh, maybe I haven't done I haven't done shrooms deep enough in like since like college. So or maybe, maybe you're already in touch with your that that you inner, might be that inner essence. Oh, dude, thanks. I mean, I, I've been reading a lot of Eckhart Tolle, and basically what he preaches is what you just illustrated with the whole like the mind is just it's just insanity, but at your core, you're just a peaceful being. But if you're taking shrooms and, and you're not getting there, that might be a sign that you are exactly where you need to be. Oh, it sounds like JT's got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where yeah. Chad just might be at that level where he needs to be. Dude, thank you. Well, I was thinking the same thing for you. I was like with, you know, with ayahuasca, I don't know if you I don't know if you want to mess I don't know if you want to mess with with what's yeah, going on. Yeah, maybe I am where I need to be. Ram Das said that once he got to a place with his like meditation mm -hmm. and with his like spiritual practice that he would do uh, psychedelics and wouldn't really change much. Yeah. Because I think he was already kind of in that headspace. Interesting. He might have just been bragging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I did shrooms, you know, a couple times in the fall. And, and <laughs> we have a friend, Kevin, the schmoll. And uh, he's so into that stuff. And I, I told him, I'm like, yeah, I, I took some, some shrooms. And he's like, what did you learn? <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I guess I have to look, think about what I'm learning right now. You learn that you really want to go to space. I want to go to space. That's one thing. Yeah. I love the ocean. And then uh, speak up more. That was, that was the three lessons. Those are great. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Kevin's in our crew. You have a tremendous crew. We got a good, we got a, we got a good group of guys. How'd you build yeah. the team? A lot of it. A lot of the guys came through the hotel. Like my guy, mm -hmm. Joey Coldcuts. Great he guy. He was working. Oh, he's fantastic. He, he was working at the restaurant at that hotel. Mm. Our other friend, the Big Maple, he was working at the other restaurant at the hotel. So it all kind of came together, all, you know, working through the hotel. Yeah. For me, that was a big reason why I didn't go to Barstool, which obviously is a really tough decision. But 
first off, I had just got out to California. I was in a great situation out here, but we had such a good crew, mm-hmm. and so many of of that crew was a reason why we were being able to do what we were doing, having the success we were having, to where I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave the boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were so tight. We were having so much fun. We really felt like we were doing it the right way to where it was like, why would I, why would I leave that? Yeah. It's so important. I mean, the crew keeps you grounded too. For sure. Especially if you're out here, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need those boys that are just like. Oh, even, even coming out here, you always think whenever you move somewhere, you always think, you know, I really want to find a good group of friends and, and, and whatnot. And it happened so fast to where you don't even realize it's like, holy shit, like this is exactly what you wanted. You had that good of a crew. Did your eyes light up when he met Joey Colcutt's like the first oh, time you heard phenomenal. him? He, he just hit you with some kind of comment that he, um, spoke he, to a special way of looking at things. My, my manager, I was working at the front desk at the time, and my manager... Um, had a noise complaint about Cold Cut's restaurant because he was running the restaurant really late and they were playing loud music. It was affecting guests coming in to check in. And she went in to go complain and then Cold Cut's came back out to the front desk to kind of talk it out a little bit. And he came to me and he's like, dude, can I ask? He's like, do you think the music is, is too loud? And I said, I think it's fantastic. I think people are having a good time. Everybody's enjoying themselves. And then right out of the gate, I mean, Joey Cold Cut's just hit it off. Because yeah. you showed him that you were a good dude. About that action. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and the bottom About line is people action. were having a good time. People mm-hmm. were inside. They were dancing. They were having fun. It was drawing people to the restaurant to where I truly felt that, too. It was a yeah. net positive. Yeah. Everybody was having a good time. The vibes were great. Um, music wasn't as loud, I thought, as, as my manager thought. And, and right away, we just ended up becoming great friends. And then the crew kind of pieced together from there. Jersey, Jersey Jerry, is that his name? Jersey Jerry. Is that from childhood? Is that from no, childhood? no, Jersey Jerry. He was just, he was like a fan of the show and he was oh. DMing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was like your childhood friend. No, a lot of people do, especially since he's from Jersey, but yeah. he was DMing me and yeah. I, I went to his profile and he had these call-ins to radio shows like ESPN and all of that. And usually when you call into those they hang up on you right away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you make your point first time, long time listener, first time caller, you make your point, they hang up on you. He would have these calls into these radio shows and they would keep them on. Will Kane, like Michael K, because they got such a kick out of this guy. And he would stay on for like 10, 15 minutes. And I always wonder what those guys do that call into the radio shows. You wait for two, three hours of your day mm. just to get hung up on. Yeah. Um, and they would call him on and I saw it. I thought it was hysterical. So I was like, hey, you should come on the show, whatnot. And then that just kind of created from there. Nice. I, I got a big question, too. Sure. Joey Coldcuts. Yeah. I mean, there's this ongoing saga. I kind of want to, on the, on this podcast, I want to know, did he fart? I think he farted. Yeah. I, I think, I, I do. I don't know where else that would have came from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. And, yeah. And he takes the swing. We're on the golf course. He takes the swing. There's clearly a fart. And if you look at his swing, at the point of where his swing was when he farted, mm. would have been a perfect time to fart. To release. To release. Yeah. To, to let it fly. Um, and listeners, check out Brilliant, uh, Brilliant sorry, I could, the L's. Dude, you're doing Brilliantly great. Dumb on Instagram. Uh, check out this saga. You know, we got footage of cold cuts you know hitting the golf swing it looks like he's farting sounds like he's farting but you know a lot of people are debating it so and he gets check upset it out because i asked him i said did you just fart and he got very hostile like he gets very upset yeah um do you think it, w- it was a fart total when i first heard it i was like fart gotta be a fart yeah and i think both fart gates were absolutely a fart yeah and again, the, the, at the time of his swing, it's at the perfect time. If he would have been in his backswing and farted, I would say no, not a fart. Is he a bigger guy? He is. So do you think any of you guys assuming it's a fart is prejudiced towards Could, bigger I, dudes? I, I would hate to say yes, but yes, I do. And there are people in the fart gate that, that'll back him up and that, that get upset about it too. Understandably so. Um, but I, I, I do think he farted. You got to trust your gut. <laughs> you do. You do. You got to trust it. Um, so when you're how when you're filming everybody when you guys are golfing, how do you know when's the moment to to pull out the camera? 
A, if they have like a tricky shot, like if they're behind trees or something, you never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? You don't know if it's going to plink around, hit it. A lot, and, of, a lot of ways it could go. There's so much that could go wrong. Um, but from the main part, what we do is even, you know, if you're not behind trees, we just keep that thing rolling. So the camera when we're out on the golf course, it's just rolling all the time. We always have our phones. We, you know, whatnot to where you just never know what's going to happen. And your lady's a big golfer too. She right? is. She is. Dude, it's fine. I get invested in it's awesome relationships that I see blossom on social media. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like invested. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. What I like about her, she doesn't mind. I'm a big believer. Like I always want a camera to be rolling. You know what I mean? And that can be tough. Sometimes if you're having a bad round or whatnot, like, you know, you don't want to care when you fish, you're getting frustrated or whatnot. There's like a mutual understanding between her, Joey Coldcuts, like all the people that we have out there, that the camera's just going to be running. And if you we get you with the bad shot, like it's going to go up and there's just this mutual understanding. We love it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good stuff. What, what are your... Uh, I'd love to get your overarching uh, philosophies on some big topics. So, like uh, on love, what do you what do you think is like the uh, what's your what's your outlook on love? I you know I I I think it's I'm a big believer. I know it's cliche. When you know, you know. Mm. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. When you know you got the right one, you usually got the right one. Um, and I think you just gotta let that shit flow, man. Just let it flow. No timeline. No. You know, dates of, of when you want certain things to happen. You just let it flow. Hmm. Nice. And what about on, like, uh, life? Do you have, like, a... Do you think there's order to this, or do you think it's kind of chaos? Does everything happen for a reason, or is it all kind of just the meaning we bring to it? It's definitely chaos, but I do think it everything happens for a reason. Hmm. So from our vantage point, it's chaos. But if you zoom out, there's an order yeah, to it. Yeah, there's a reason to it. Hmm. And it's just nuts how one decision or certain things happen that totally change the direction of where your life goes. What were those big ones for you? Not going to Barstool. What if I was in New York? I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wouldn't have met my girlfriend. I wouldn't be with Joe at Cold Cuts. Like, stuff like that that just totally changed the Were direction. you talking to Portnoy? Yeah. And so he was trying to bring you on the team? Yeah. he. I got. A, I was working, and I got a DM from him. And, of, of course, I'm a huge Barstool guy. And, yeah, getting that, totally freaked out. Mm. Totally freaked out. Yeah. But you just like, it's not the right fit. Or it might have been the right fit. It yeah. just was like there was a better fit. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't at first when he texted me. I was like, "Okay, done. It's a, it's a done deal." But then when I actually really thought about it and like reflected on it, it it, it kind of was like, "Holy shit!" Like maybe I'm I'm not gonna go. And if you would have told me that I would say no to them, um, I was you know I would say no way. I, I think it was a smart move. I because uh, I, I, I think you'll flourish in, independently. Yeah, I, and I, I think I think your 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 ceiling is much higher now. And think about it. We wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah. We wouldn't be gabbing. Yeah. No. Yeah. What about, what's like the foundational pieces of uh, art that kind of shaped your your sensibility? Oh, wow. That's deep. That's deep. Because I don't know. I don't know what kind of music you listen to. I was trying to think about it. I was like, what's 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 yeah. Robbie listening to when That's he drives around? Yeah. Oh, it is. It's a phenomenal question. You know what I'm big on? Is I'm a huge, huge Billy Joel guy. Oh, oh, that makes a Hell lot of yeah, sense. Dude, that it? makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, 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 that really, that really hit, huh? Yeah. yeah, I love, I love me some Billy Joel. I really do. I yeah. think he's phenomenal. I'll dabble in Elton John and um, the Eagles. I but Billy Bruce? Joel is my guy. What was that? Bruce. Of course, I'll get into Bruce. But Billy for me hits hard. Like mm -hmm. you, that, that hits home. You get that tingle. You get that. You know what I mean? Not to say that Bruce can't do that. Billy, for me, is always... Well, just... that's why when Cold Cuts is coming out of the restaurant and they're getting noise complaints, you're looking in there. They probably got a piano in there, right? Yeah. And you're just thinking, this is it. Let them go. We can start the fire. Let them ride. Let them fly. Let them enjoy themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of my favorite things is seeing people enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? Seeing people have a good time. Yeah. You know? Were you a big partier? Not really. Just a big socializer. Just a big, yes. Yeah. Anywhere where I could go and, and talk and move around and, and stuff like that, I'm all for. Mm. But I don't think I was a huge partier. I just like the gatherings together. And then at parties, I like seeing other people have a good time. Mm. It's great. So you're at Action Park Media right now. Yeah. And were you a big entourage? So Action Park Media is run by Kevin Connolly. Yeah. Uh, e from Entourage. So were you a big entourage guy growing up? 
Oh yeah, yeah, big time. That was like the to the point where I mean, still till this day, mm-hmm. it, I'll watch it. And how is it now? You know, you're you're hanging out with like Johnny Drama and, yeah. and Kevin Connolly regularly. Is it a mind trip, or are you kind of like, oh, these are just my boys now? Till this day, yeah, like yeah. We go, we went out golfing with them, and like. There were times where we were out golfing where you had Johnny Drama and then you had Kevin Connolly e in yeah. in a cart together. Yeah. And watching them go to their ball in the cart driving together and like drama right. telling uh he had to hit a shot and stuff like that. There were times throughout the rounds where I was like, dude, this is insane. I was in the yeah. cart with Cole Cuts and I kept saying to Cole Cuts, like, Do you realize how insane this is? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just nuts. What's their report like? very similar to the show which is bizarre like it, it's it's you know th- they're different in some regards but from the from the most part they're very very similar is it to art the show. imitating life or life imitating art <sighs> um life imitating art i would say they took it on oh dude for sure we even went out with we were out with johnny drama and we were golfing and we were golfing with the head pro of um of the course and we're out on the fairway, and it's, it's a par five, and the head pro's trying to tell drama to lay up, like to play the course, play it smart, play it safe, lay up. And drama listens to him, and he takes his little iron out, and then all of a sudden you see him over the ball thinking, and he turns and he pops up and he goes, no offense, bro, but I didn't come here to lay up. And he puts his iron back into the bag, takes a big three wood, Hits it into the water. It, it <laughs> was like classic, classic Johnny drama. Love That's that. amazing. Oh, it was so great. But yeah, throughout the round, I'm pinching myself. I'm like, this is this is insane. Like yeah. this is nuts. And they're great guys. Do you ever uh, ask uh, Kevin Conley about his uh, uh, gallivanting with the uh, the pussy posse? All the time. All the time. It's wild. I feel like anybody connected to Leonardo DiCaprio in some way, shape, or form. It's like just such a legendary... Like you hear a story about Michael Jordan, instantly it's legendary. Mm -hmm. You hear a story about Leo or know anybody with a connection. They're a little larger than life. Oh, totally. Totally. To where it's insane. But yeah, all the time. And he's seen so much throughout his career that, you know, you sit in the studio with him, you hear what he says and different stories that he's had. It's fascinating. It's got to be. And David Blaine was in that crew, right? Yeah, which, you know, I've, I, I've asked him, and I don't remember what he said. I, I always wonder how Blaine snuck into that. Right. Well, he's a magician. Well, yeah, but he's a magician, but where, how did they all... How get did they connected. All, yeah, like, was he ever an actor? Like, how did they all get connected? Right. And a damn good magician. The best, right? The most, I mean, do you think, could you know of a better magician, better than David Blaine? I don't think so. Chris Angel? Nah. There we go. Wow. Now we got to think. Mind now, freak. now we got it. Now, the mind yeah. freak. Yeah. Who do you got, Chad? Chris Angel or David Blaine? I think I got to go with D. Blaine. Yeah. Yeah. I was just throwing Chris Angel out there just because that's the only other name I know. Uh, Justin Wellman. What's his name? Oh, yeah. Um, well, this is bad because I, I was like, I worked on <laughs> his Comedy Central pilot. Justin Wellman? Justin Wellman. I think that's what it is. Nice guy. Good guy. Uh, he's a good He's a good magician, too. But, yeah. I, I was on a lot of drugs when I worked on that show, guys. Was he? Good for him. No, I was on a lot. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, you no, know he was funny. He was bone sober. He was he was a professional. Also, too, like, you think about actors, like, how hard it is coming up with the actors and stuff like that. Imagine being a magician coming up and telling people that you're a magician. Oh. Tough. Tough, tough. sledding. Tough. Yeah. If you're in high school, you're keeping that to yourself. Uh, totally. Unless you've already got the goods. Right. Because I think I think what you can do is like there was occasionally where I, people would have offbeat passions and you'd be like, oh, what a dork. But then the talent show would come around and you're like, you're like, did you see Caleb Irish dance? The yeah. kid can bring it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, you know, they had an audio visual component, too, where like behind him on the screen, it's split screen into other Caleb's doing the Irish jig. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. Like, this is like a full scale immersive experience. And then I just had to tip my hat to yeah. him. Talent, if you got the goods. Totally. Or you, even like, you know, you meet friends, friends' parents, they take you out to dinner or something. Say, oh, you know, you what do you do? You give your whole story. Your whole spiel. You say you're a magician. It's tough to get them to, to take you seriously. It is. It's got to be tough growing up with that. It's a big totally. buy-in. Yeah. And magi- magicians, too, always cocky on stage. 
I hate yeah. it. Yeah, you're so right. Yeah, they. I mean, man, they they really bring it. I mean, I think you have to really really believe that you know you're the fucking man because every time every magician I see on stage, they're just so just like commanding the room, just like. Well, their patter's always, like, superior. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, you thought it was a jack? Oh, <laughs> you goofball. It's <laughs> yeah, actually no. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they take that off the stage. Like, if they take that big dick energy off of I'm it. I'm sure I'm sure it bleeds they better in. better not. Probably. It's, unless... To some degree, I'll right? Smack yeah. Magician. Yeah. But unless, unless you don't... Unless you feel like the magic is all you have. Yeah. You know, maybe when you get off the stage and you're sort of like, who am I? You know, right. without my cards. They feel a little absent of their power yeah yeah it's like how they said johnny carson when he wasn't hosting the tonight show he was just a sad guy like he yeah. needed that red light to be on is that to be able so to talk. yeah yeah people said he was the most socially uncomfortable person they ever saw really they're like if there was a red light on in his living room he would have been the best conversationalist in the room in the in the world meaning like the red light from the camera uh, fascinating because mm. he was one of the best to ever do he's the best right yeah and uh yeah but terribly insecure and introverted guy uh, off camera and then as soon as he gets off stage he's just a different guy different guy a lot of times too with musicians too like they're they're more comfortable on stage performing it's interesting you know yeah they come alive they do i they do I, I feel that being on stage i'm, I'm more comfortable I, i've i've had that uh i just like being on stage it, it being more uh just having a mic in your hand it's sort of like I guess being the youngest, where you sort of like I always I the youngest family dinners I don't say a word, you know I and, and so it, everyone was all just talking and stuff and I was just like yeah, eating my peas, you know. But, but then do you, you now feel, the Shakespeare quote. feel the need to be the funny guy to where people are expecting you to be on? Um, Even friends from home now you go you see them do they expect that you're going to be on? Uh, I felt that early on. But uh, as I got more comfortable with it, now I just I, I just try to bring uh, levity and, and just like a good good, good attitude. I, I think that I think that's more my focus because I'm like, you know, yeah. I was just like, I, that, that's just like an unreachable thing of just always being hilarious. You know, it's, it's and I just, I just know there's just I'm I'm either in like a funny mode or not. Yep. You know, and so I, I'm like, a, the best I can do is just bring a good attitude yeah see my thing too is like i got so much energy all the time yeah that people expect me to always have that energy and yeah. some days i just don't have it yeah and if if you're the slightest bit off people yeah. will say well what's wrong what's wrong hey you okay what's wrong and you really don't want them that's it the truth of the matter is you just may not have your a stuff yeah that time yeah you know what i mean i just i, I just tell them if someone's like, hey, what's up? Like, you're not on. I go, yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad today. It's a great and then, approach. And then that'll make them laugh. They'll be like, oh, oh you're yeah. sad? You go, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. really sad today. And it kind of fires them <laughs> up, you know? Gives them permission to go in different directions. I, I guarantee, I'm being honest with you, I will use that. It works. Yeah. Just short shortcut. That's great. And I, I think also, if you're like a... I was having dinner with like my ex's friends and they were like, how are you feeling about like COVID and stuff? I was like, it's nice. And they were like, why? I was like, well, my brain's so chaotic. It's nice when the rest of the world looks just as fucked up as my head. <laughs> and then they all start laughing. They're like, your boyfriend's hilarious. I'm like, I'm not joking. But yeah, I was like, if that, if that works for you, good. Like, I think they almost, because if you're a funny person, they think you're always being funny. Yeah, hundred percent. So I don't know. I think it gives me a nice, gives me a nice place to jag yeah. from. By the way, I think it's uh, advantageous. Chad, I, I didn't want to finish without saying, and because I, I didn't say it the first time to you, you had an unbelievable set of hair. Oh, oh it's dude, all time. Thank you. Is that, I mean, it's just, yeah, that really is. It's I, I really appreciate that. I thank mean, that you. thing's there to stay. Yeah. It's uh, it's my pride and joy. Yeah. Put a lot of time and effort into it. I, you know, and, and, and I'll, I'll run through stylists, you know, like my girl Jess bailed uh, last year. I, I don't think she's cutting hair anymore. Yeah. I felt lost, and but it was also during COVID, so it was like a time where you couldn't get haircuts. Yeah, and so I was just letting it grow, you know. Um, but then I found a new girl, Myra, who's just on fire. I think your girl Jess is probably a magician now. 
<laughs> I, I think so, dude. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I gotta ask her, yeah. Do you do you tell them what you want done with your hair, or since they're a stylist, they choose? Yeah, I, I tell them what I... Oh, you, you do? I tell them what I want, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm pretty specific, you know, because they'll, they'll try to they'll try to hit me with the Bieber, the, the old school Bieber. They'll try right. to go super short on the back, and then, like, long, and I'm like, not that's not me. Like, I know, I know you think that that's gonna look good, but it's not. So... You know, and if, and if they if they go in that direction, I'll, I'm, I'm you know it's the only time where I'm mean, you know, when I'm, when I'm in the hair. haircut chair, you know. Yeah, you tell them you give me the Bieber cut. Yeah, it's gonna be too late to say sorry. Yeah, you know that that's when I, that's the only time I'm curt. You know, <laughs> they start if they start cutting the back, and I, I see that the scissors moving up. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, you gotta check them. I, I love that moment in the haircut where you know they're about to go too far because yeah. they're always going to go too far in one always direction. Always going to go too far. Like yeah. I'm like, hey, just a quarter inch, and then every time it's a half inch. Yeah. And you see them go to do the, you, they got it perfect, and then yeah. they go to do more, and you go, hold it. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it, dating wise too, you know, if a girl's like, you know, you're a little too nice, you know, I'll be like, well, watch me get a haircut. Yeah. And I'll I'll bring them along Come and the they'll watch me get a haircut, and they'll just see me just, you know. Savage. You're a different go to, guy. Go, you're go a different guy. Sa- yeah, she's animal. like, wow, you're a savage. I'm like, yeah, for the things I care about, yeah, I don't fuck around. So that's why with this relationship, I'll kill for you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Dude, I felt that. Yeah. Robbie, Rob, can I ask you something? Anything. What are the three? Give me three movies. I'm a big sports guy. Okay. Huge. Love it. All right. So I would go with my top three. I would go, remember the Titans? Okay. Oh, yeah. I would go away from sports here, and I would say Goodwill Hunting, just an absolute classic. So you love a movie with a good speech. I do. Where a guy's bringing the best out of the other guy. Oh, I absolutely do. I love, I love a good speech. I like take me on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. Give me the highs. Give me the lows. I was um, thinking about Remember the Titans this morning. Well, it, and what I was thinking about Britier and Julius Campbell when they have their first kind of face to face not when they brawl but when they're after practice yep and he goes that's the biggest waste of god-given talent i've ever seen and then he goes attitude reflect leadership, leadership coach captain captain yeah and then that next day is when they start that's left side strong side i'll give you right a new there. haircut yeah strong side left side yeah, it's phenomenal and then so what's the third the third i would go i i don't think i could go sports again i'd probably go shawshank I mean, you can't. Great that's stuff. chalk. It's chalk. Yep, yeah. and you nobody's chalk. nobody's gonna fight you on that. Mm-hmm. No, those are classics. And yeah, foundational films. You can watch those every day of the week. Oh, I watched the clip from Goodwill Hunting. Yes, two days ago. Two which, days ago. Which clip was it? I w- guess when they're sitting by at the park. No, I didn't close, but I went with when Affleck mm. tells him. Oh, phenomenal! Clip. If you're still here in thirty years, I'll kick your ass. Oh, yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal clip. Mm. That comes I up do on my TikTok to have what you feed got. a lot. Oh, it's so good. I like, you know, with TikTok, a lot of the movie clips come up. Mm -hmm. I love that shit. There was a YouTube comment underneath it that I really thought crystallized what makes that scene so special. It said, this whole film, all these people have been trying to encourage Will to change his life and, and, you know, fulfill his potential. But the only person who ends up getting through to him that really makes him make that leap is his best friend. Doesn't Mm -hmm. that hit deep? All these mathematicians, these therapists, all these different people are trying to get through to him. But it's his best friend that he grew up with who actually gets him to make the leap. Mm. And you talk about a guy that could just do it all, Robin Williams. Oh. I mean, to get into Incredible. that deep from being a comedian, then to go in and being that emotional and raw, mm-hmm. phenomenal. Talent. Yeah. It's crazy with him, too, because, you know, I, I, I always bring up, like, the negative sides of people. I don't know. I, just, well, I think they're complicated. It's interesting. But, like, you know, Robin Williams, notorious joke thief. Do you know this? Is that so? Oh, so in I San Francisco, where he came yeah. from... They used to have like a scene so you know, they light you in, in stand up to say you got so many minutes left on yeah. stage. I guess they had an other light that they would flip on to say Robin's in the building, like hide your material. Basically. Come on. I swear to you. And so I guess he stole a ton from like David Brenner, but he always, I guess, felt conflicted about it because he would come and write checks to people like to kind of and it, it was never a contract established in advance, but he would he would throw money to people to take their jokes Basically to make up for taking their jokes. Really? It was like apologizing rather than asking for permission kind of mm. thing. And so he, and then, you know, some people think it's because he was so stream of conscious that when he was on stage, he was riffing so fast that he had to pull whatever was in his head. And oftentimes that was something that someone else said. 
And so it just came out of his, you know, motor mouth style. Um, or was yeah, it and then I, I'm sure put his own spin on it and, and his delivery. That's the thing with him, his delivery. Mm-hmm. And he's a genius. Like, yeah. I mean, it went to Juilliard and he can do any kind of character. I, I you know, I, I don't, I, I, it doesn't make me think less of him as a comedian. He's so talented, yeah. but it just makes me just curious about who he was as a person a little bit. Isn't it amazing to guys that are either that smart or that talented tend to have the most like issues off off stage and stuff like that because I just feel like they are so overwhelmed with so many thoughts and different emotions that it's hard to kind of keep it all together Mm -hmm. and you just got to think his mind was so frantic all the time and in just so many different places that in a way it's almost a burden Mm -hmm. well we we were talking about this last week too and just like with him and like you know Richard Pryor was such such a sad guy did the sadness did that help their art or did it make it worse? I, I, I like to think it didn't. They would have been just as good had they been, you know. You would like to think so. Had definitely. they been happy. Definitely. I think they would have been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Robin's such a talent. People forget his one of his first movies, Moscow on the Hudson. He learned Russian and the saxophone. <laughs> and he's like, really? it's like his third movie out. Yeah, yeah that's really just how much shit he probably had going on. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if like that that high of intelligence it, it allows you to get deeper moments into that that sort of um, that deep well of creativity. So it's yeah. like maybe I, I don't know if maybe they're you know high functioning all the time, just thinking of great material all the time, or if they're just like they had these spurts of like intense kind of flow. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's interesting. I wonder. I and wonder the, how that, to have yeah. the range that he did then to go into movies and either be the funny guy or do what he did in Goodwill Hunting. Unbelievable in drama. Yeah. It, it is. It's insane. Awakenings yeah. with the Bobby De Niro. It's crazy. I, I was thinking about that too. Like with creativity, it's like yeah. you know we talk about fast twitch muscle versus slow twitch muscle. Yeah. Some people are marathon runners. Some people are sprinters. Yeah. In fighting, some people grind it out. Some people just hit you with bursts. Yeah. I think maybe creativity is the same way too. You yeah. Know I mean? Some people are fast twitch creative, yeah. where they, they they just hit you with like a big burst and it comes out quick and hard and then they. They go down. Yeah. And some people are just, you know, Con- slow rollers. Continue, yeah. Yeah. Continue at the same pace. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think a lot of it, I mean, there's, a, you know, it's like, we have sort of different writing styles in the sense, like, you like to be around people and performing. I like to be alone and solitary. Yeah. You know, that's, and I think, I, I think a lot of it has to do with, like, what gets you more present. You know, like, uh, if you're around people, I think you're able to be more present. Mm-hmm. If I, when I'm alone, I'm able to be more present. When I'm around people, it's more kind of like... My mind's going every which way. I can't focus. As when much. you guys write together, do you are you comfortable with saying no? I don't like that. Like, is there times where you guys bring something and you say no? I, I'm I'm not big on that and change it up. We don't say. I don't think we ever outright say no. I don't like that. Yeah. I think it's more like occasionally we'll say that. Yeah. But I think most of the time it's more like try to be thoughtful about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess where it's like hmm, and then I think if. It's nice to have a reason or an alternative. Like if you don't like something, I think it's good to have like a reason why you don't like it. That makes sense where we're like, hey, I think that doesn't like fit tonally with what we already got. So it might make it to this. So right. we can't do that. Or you'd yeah. be like, but I think the best thing to do is to is to build on the idea. Like if you don't like the idea, instead of just outright being like, because I, I'll shut down stuff too much, I think. Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll, instead of being like, no, I don't like that. I think the best thing you can do is go, okay, well, why did he think? that was the move there's got to be a good reason why and then build something and then be like maybe not that but maybe this that's kind of an offshoot of that right and i think that's the best way to do it if you're working collaboratively i I think odenkirk said that like bob odenkirk said that one of the biggest bits on mr show was brian post saying pitch something and then (laughs) odenkirk said he was like that's the worst idea i've ever heard (laughs) but then he thought about it more and he was like okay but like brian's a funny guy why do you think of that and then they were able to like Piece it together. From Piece there, it together. Why he's coming up with that? And then it was like the biggest sketch they ever did. Yeah. I, I had another question for you, but I can't remember what it was. Lay it on me. Yeah, hit him with it. Yeah. What? What? What, what, well, I, I what, gotta, what, what was it in the realm of? Or if it comes up, just smack me right in the mouth with it, Jed. <laughs> have you been punched before? I never have, and I really wonder what that's like. I watch UFC. I watched the UFC card the other day. Stuff like that. Great card. Great card. I just wonder what's that like to where I almost do want to get punched just to to feel it. Obviously, I don't want to get punched, but I wonder all the time what it's like. 
I've never been in a fight either, but I had a friend punch me in high school. It was pretty, now, that wasn't it was pretty, a fight, though? No. We were, we were just hammered in Spain, and we just socked each other in the face. You know, like, he socked me first. I socked him. Yeah. And it was pretty liberating. I, I feel like it would be for me. Like, if yeah. you said, you know, can I punch you in the face? I, I would say no. <laughs> but if you just went ahead and did it, I feel like I would I would appreciate it because I want to know what it's like to, to wear one. Yeah. I just don't ever see me being an... I'm just not that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not a fighter. I'm not a... Uh, no, I think you would synthesize... You're a beef synthesizer. Yeah, I think you, you neutralize the, the fight. Yeah, that's where... That's where I, I like to be that guy. Do I not yeah. destroy my enemy by making him my friend? Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. And and at the same time, too, like, I'll see my... You know, you got some friends that go out, they go to a bar or whatever, and the fight's just... Why? Yeah. You know, where are you going with that? Yeah. What's They're the horny. best possible outcome? They're just horny, right? Could be. They could just be horny. What What do you see? What's your sort of vision for your career wise? Where Where do you see yourself headed? What 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 do you What do you want? I I would love to be like a Johnny Carson. Yeah, I think you'd be I, great I, at that. Absolutely. I would love to be a talk show host. I yeah. really would. I think that. If I had to put a goal, because for a while I, I kind of wondered, like, you know, what, what is, like, I wondered what that, the answer to that question was. I knew it was something in entertainment, making people laugh. Is it stand-up? Yeah. Is it is it this or that? And, and when I really, when push comes to shove, I really feel like that would be the best. That would be the greatest. I love that. I love sitting down, having a conversation, mm-hmm. you know, you're making it fun. I just think that would be incredible. I could totally see that. I would uh, have a ball. And, and with the way uh, entertainment's going, cr- uh, like, what do you think the next version of The Tonight Show is that's going to survive? Yeah, I tell you, that's, that's a good question. That's going to thrive. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, because it does seem like a lot of these talk shows, like, yeah, the the, the host, they have their different styles and, and whatnot. Yeah. But but it's all pretty similar. Yeah, in pretty boilerplate. setup. Yeah. yeah. And you see Jimmy Fallon messes around with the music and, and different games and stuff like that. But I, I do wonder what the next step is. How do you change it up? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't I don't even know. I, I don't know what exactly it looks like. Yeah. But what I do love to see is the different styles. Like I think to me Letterman was incredible. He's got an unbelievable style. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, dude, great. Um but I do like to see different people change it up. I like James Gordon. I think it's hysterical, too. Yeah. Who's who's your dream person to talk to? I would be so curious to sit down with Howard Stern. Yeah. It'd be so... It's going to happen. I hope. But you uh, want to... do What side of the of the sticks do you want to I would love on? to ask him the questions. I really would. But when yeah. he did Letterman's Netflix thing, he couldn't do it. He, uh, it's so funny you said that. I saw that. He has such a hard time... Being a guest. Mm-hmm. He's so used to hosting and going into that host mode. I struggle with that sometimes, too, is being a guest. It, you saw that in, in in Letterman's. He comes on, and he totally just turns into the host. Mm-hmm. And even Letterman said to him, I'm the, let me ask the questions. He likes to be... He likes that vantage point. Oh, for sure. He likes being the one who's in charge of where it's going. Also, too, like it'd be so cool to be on... So my dad's such a big Stern fan... Just for his sake, to, mm-hmm. to if he ever saw me on that or something like that. I mean, it would be incredible. Yeah. All right, let's get into some... Do you want to do an ad first, Chad? Maybe I'll do them after. Okay, sounds good. just throw them in. All right, here we go. Let's let's pick some good ones. It's a quick one. It's from, normally, they're long questions. You know, we're Love big them. on content. What do I do? They email you guys in? They email them in. Love it. And I don't vet them. I, I go through them in the moment. Yeah. So these are these, we're no prep. Fresh, I love that. Fresh out, draw. Of the, fresh out of the hopper. Lonely or horny? How do I know if I'm lonely or just horny? Thanks, boys. Well, you're probably both. I would think so. I would think so. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to know which is bigger. You know what I mean? Because I've been horny and then I realized later that I was I was I was more horny. And then I've but more often I've thought I was horny. And realize you were just lonely. I was lonely. Yeah, I hit a spot with with if I am too horny, then I question: Am I just lonely? Mm-hmm. You know, rather than just enjoy being horny, I'll hit a spot where I do question: Like maybe I'm just lonely. Yeah. Great question, though. Short, sweet, to the point. Yeah. Yeah, I think you just gotta like, how horny are we talking? Yeah. 
Yeah. I wish he was here to actually clarify. Yeah. Just how horny he was talking. And I wouldn't condone, you know, maybe if if you want to if you want to be sort of a you know, your own guinea pig, maybe drill yourself and then say are these feelings still coming up or did I just, you know, blast them through my dong? It can be the great the great equalizer. Yeah. <laughs> Is she off limits? What up, Chad and JT? How's life? I'm a freshman in high school, and there's this one girl at my school who's just perfect. She's hella cute, great personality, the whole package. However, there is one problem. She dated my homie a year ago. They only dated for a week or two and didn't have a messy breakup. She's still friends with my homie. That allows for the big question. Is she off limits? Do I move on and just forget about it? I go back and forth on whether I should move or not. As of now, I feel I should move on, but I just wanted to hear what you guys think. Also, if you say she isn't off limits, I suck at flirting. It's not like I'm scared to talk to them. I just can't flirt. Any advice on that? Let's take it bit by bit. Is she, is she off limits? Um... Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't think so, but given that this guy's freshman in high school, I know how you know amped up those feelings are. If you're like, dude, I dated her for I, I, like his friends probably like, bro, I, that's my ex, even though they dated for a week. You know, that's just freshman. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't think she's off limits. I, if you really want to, you know, do your due diligence, I would check with your buddy and just be like, hey, I, you know, can I ask her out? Of course, check with the buddy. I think the buddy should give you the green light. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. There's plenty of fish in the sea, but not when you're a freshman in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your dating pool is relatively small. Yeah. And also at that point, everyone's going through relationships so quickly. I don't think it's the same as like your 30 year old buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you're a little more developed in, in your attachments. This yeah. is like, you know, everyone's figuring it out. So yeah. I don't think your friend should feel uh any kind of i don't know ownership over that yeah you know what i mean i think i think he's got to give you the green light the only thing i worry about with the green light and i would ask the friend too is even though he gives you the green light does it now affect that friendship i think we're gonna we're gonna find out yeah let's let's battle test it a little bit i i i think you have no choice but to at least see and test the grounds a little bit but definitely get that get that clarified i think it shows a lot of integrity to go to your friend first i do i do and then if if he doesn't give you the green light i think you say maybe do give me the green light push back a little bit yeah if you're if you're super into her um and then he says i suck at flirting i can talk to him i just can't flirt well if you're talking to them you're flirting yeah yeah this whole like, am I flirting? Do I suck? It's like, well, just just keep talking. Yeah, I would say, yeah, just whenever you're talking to them, make sure make sure it's a good time. Yeah, yeah bring bring your own Robbie Burger to it. Yeah, a lot of times talking is flirting. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It also sounds like there's no wounds. Like time heals all wounds. There's no wound in his relationship with that girl, his buddy's relationship. Yeah, that kid's having a ball. But He's it's, in a it's good also been a year, so like, even if there was. He should be kind of over it by now. Like I have, like my my high school girlfriend is married to one of my high school buddies. Mm-hmm. But it was like two, three years later. So it's like I don't care. Go ahead, man. Do, yeah, do your thing. Totally agree. Do we hang out or talk? No. And and <laughs> when you're that age though, too, there's just gonna be overlap. There's nothing you can yeah. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, bros, I need advice. I've been hanging out with this girl for a couple weeks now, and she stayed the night at my homie's house with me the other night, and it was awesome. The homie who owns the house though. It was, however, has been hitting on her and stayed at her house last night after a party. I don't think anything happened, but is this a red flag? I can't trust my dog. He's too horny. I've known him for forever, but if I can't trust him, can we stay friends? Thanks, boys. No, I don't think you can trust your friend. I mean, you can trust him to be your friend. You know what I mean? That line from Jackie Brown. You can trust her to be her, but in this case, him. Um, you know what, dude? I think you just gotta, you gotta hang in the octagon with this guy and you gotta beat him. You just gotta beat him. Yeah, I think you go toe to toe. I think okay. you go dancing with the guy. I really do. I mean, you can, yeah, you can you can be mad at the universe that why did, why can't it just be easy? Well, it can't. It's tough. It's amazing how how horny people people are out there. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're all horny. Yeah, you a horny guy? I am. Yeah, I am. Love that. Definitely. Love that. Yeah, I think. Uh, how old are they? No age here. I'm guessing from the, the, the syntax and the overall vibe that he's a 20-year-old. Right. Top high end of the age uh, guess, I'd say 24. Yeah. But more likely 20, 20 to 22. Yeah. Yeah, I would say too, I would say, you know, pursue this nice lady. You know, get in there, you know. 
So go toe to your friend. Though. What's up? Like, how do you gauge, say you're a horny guy, how do you gauge how horny you are? For me, it's always what other people tell me. Gotcha. So I've, I've had, Which is really all you have to go off of. I've had friends say, you're, you're a horny guy. There we go. Because they just know. Yeah. They, just, they feel it from me. It's what I talk about. Mm. And it's, it's when we go out, they can, it's where I'm at. Horniness is always word of mouth. It's yeah. worth my, and they just, you just trust the people around you. I do, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you don't know, maybe turn one of your friends and go, hey. Am I horny? Am I a horny guy? Yeah. <laughs> and they'll know. Yeah, well, I, I, we were filming something, and the, and the camera, one of the camera ops was like, you know, we always catch you looking at boobs. <laughs> 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 just when we're out filming, they're like, dude, you're always just looking at boobs. Is that I'm true? Like, That's what Zach told me, yeah. Oh, wow, I've never noticed. Yeah. I thought I was being subtle, but you know, I, I can't. It's, I, I try to be respectful, you know. I, I'm, I not, very, I'm not like staring. Yeah, you're very respectful. Yeah, yeah you but, got good manners. But if stuff. there's if there's boobs, you know, I'm a I'm a scope. And you got it. Like a lot of times, if I go out with my girlfriend, I see guys looking at her and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just a mutual understanding that it's going to happen. Yeah. I get a little territorial. I I did in the beginning, but now like I I realize it. It's just there's nothing you could do. From stop it, stopping it. It's gonna happen. What a healthy mindset, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It it took some time to get to that mindset. It's tough, you know. But you gotta, you gotta, you adjust and overcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I think a lot of it too. As you grow up and stuff, and as you mature, you're kind of just like, you know, uh, you, you try to let go of those attachments. Where yeah. You're just sort of like, doesn't work out. All good. On to the next. You know, you you're on your path, your mission, whatever. And, you know, if they want to come along for the ride, hey, that's cool. If not, all right, see ya. Because okay. it's like, what's the point of, of pursuing something that, you know, someone else isn't as into? You know what's been getting in my craw lately, too? Is if a girl I'm fancying and we're, we're, you know, getting somewhere together, if she even just says something like, you know, I was talking to this guy and he's like the smartest guy I've ever met. I'll be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Oh, is he? Yeah. Is he? Because I, I, I got an inkling that he's not the smartest guy you ever met. I think he's kind of full of it, if I'm being real. I don't know the guy from Adam, you know, but I'm pissed. I'm mad. I'm like, I don't like, I don't like hearing that. Well, you know, dude. But, but it's great, I guess. But, you know, it is. What also, are you going to do? On another note, okay, say you have a girlfriend who hooks up with another guy, cheats on you. Are we really in the right to get mad at that guy? Because technically, if it was us and we don't know the person, we would do the same thing. We're not going to say, oh, no, I, I feel bad for this guy that you don't really know. To where I don't think that it should be blamed on the... No, you can't blame the guy. You can't, but, but that's our natural instinct. But I've, I've made a big transition in that department because I used to be like... I used to be okay with hooking up with someone if they had a boyfriend. Yeah. And now I, I, I'm, I'm not okay Good with for it. you. Good for you. I, I got to get there. Yeah. Fast. <laughs> for well, sure. I should get there quick. Well, you know what it is? I just, I, y- 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 it just took me. <laughs> I really should, t- I really got to get there. <laughs> dude, I got to get there. <laughs> yeah. Why well, was this most recent one? Was she fixed up with no, another but, dude? No, but, but, but. But you're right. It's I. I should really. That's a spot. A it it comes when it be. comes. Yeah. Well, I, I I did that in high school. I hooked up with I had a, hooked up with an ex, you know, who had a boyfriend at the time, and, and it was just so it, it was so devastating to my just like, well being. Uh, uh, not I mean to him it was much worse, but to <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard on me, dude. No, it, it was so just like the 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 guilt and and just the the way it made me feel. Yeah was just horrible and i'm like you know it not worth it in the slightest so i i think i just learned that lesson pretty pretty early pretty quick yeah it's not it's not worth it what's up boys joe rogan voice here we go i think that's my that's goldberg who says that though it's goldie right please keep me anonymous i'm writing in to get some advice on the issue that's weighed on me for months around six months ago my long-term best friend and i split ways We have been close friends since ninth grade and are now graduating from the same college together. I stopped being friends with him because I felt he was 
to be blunt, a narcissistic, self-centered asshole. To paint a quick picture, he's the kind of guy who must always be the center of attention, is high, highly manipulative, and clearly cares almost exclusively about himself. He is very attractive outwardly, cool, smart, athletic, etc. But once you get to know him, it always feels like a one-sided relationship. That being said, though, the way the friendship ended was not great, and I think I am largely to blame for that. Instead of walking to his house and confronting him face-to-face, -face, I wimped out and ended the friendship via text. My other good friend, who was also tight with this guy, ended his friendship friendship with him the same day for similar reasons whoa that's crazy but in person and our but he did it in person and our friend was entirely unreceptive and sought only to attack him i was afraid of this and also felt it would simply be an unproductive conversation if he was unwilling to listen in my text i offered to talk in person though he never responded flash forward a few anxious weeks later i text him again repeating my wish to speak in person he denies my request and says he doesn't want to talk a few months later and i still feel guilty i have texted him since but he hasn't responded i believe he blocked me i finally worked up the courage to walk to his house and simply knock on his door but after five or six attempts he has been out of the house every time this is very dramatic yeah it is my real question is do you guys think i should continue to try to force a face-to-face -face conversation this guy was a real menace in my life for a very long time and during some crucial years i let him push me around and make me feel worse about myself it always felt like this would be a pivotal moment for me to rise above and find myself without him but i chickened out and haven't totally felt whole since I have never read Crimes and Punishment, but imagine this is somewhat how the main character felt after committing that murder. Am I allowing a narcissist to manipulate my emotions and should just forget about them? Or do I need to face the dragon one last time? I've talked with a few different friends about this and they all agree with my opinion of him, but have varying opinions about what I should do going forward. Some say I don't owe him a thing and furthermore, it would be selfish to pursue considering he, it would be selfish to pursue talking considering he expressed that he didn't want to speak. I've also spent quite a lot of time thinking about why I would remain in such an unhealthy relationship for so long. And I think that this is something I should probably consult a professional about. But if you guys have similar experiences or any guidance, I'd love to hear about that as well. I apologize for a mammoth of a question and would love to hear all of your input. Uh, peace and love. This, this guy's going through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going through it. And something that I do respect that he did that I wish we would do more of. Just go to people's house, knock on their door. Don't text them. Don't call them. That's nice. I wish there was more door knocking and ringing of the doorbells going on. Um, That's very nice. He's hurting. He's hurting, Chad. Yeah. And I, I think he's totally being manipulated by this guy. I, I, I think there's no point in trying to... If you go back in there and you try to like reason with him, this guy's a... you know, it, He's just going to fuck you up even more. Just you know, break contact... It's like, that's You're what he's done. looking for almost. Yeah. He wants this guy to fuck him up one last time. Yeah. It's almost like he misses it. Yeah. yeah. And so he's, he's chasing it. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, you just got to cut contact, you know, let, let bygones be got, you know, just separate, you know, go bake a pie. Enjoy yourself. I think people are too hard on themselves about the breakup thing, too. They're like, yeah. I, I was weak. I did it via text. I'm like, look, yeah. if you're, especially if you're dealing with a toxic person, you get out however yeah, totally you can. Great. Yeah. If you've got to do it via text or audio message, it's, it's just get out. Figure you know, out. You're just trying Fix to survive. Your own death. Yeah, whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. You want to blow up okay. your car, leave some teeth in there? Yeah. That's yeah, what you do. There is a stigma with that where I have no issue. I would almost, if I was going to get broken up on, uh, I would almost prefer it to be a phone call. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with the phone call, but the phone call is fine. Yeah, I, I think it is too. Look, if you can do it in person, great. But let's not let you know great be the enemy of the good. Like yeah. just, just whatever you got to do to get out of there. Do you know how many probably relationships kept going because they tried to do it face to face? That's it didn't the work other thing. Out? If you go face to face, a lot more potential there for uh, a reconciliation, especially yes. more, more with the boyfriend girlfriend thing, because that energy is going to create you know some desire for intimacy but no dude i think you handled it fine i think you're being a little codependent with this guy because you're kind of you know codependent he's a narcissist and those two things go hand in hand i would just stop talking to him altogether like going to his house five times what what, what are you gonna get out yeah of i totally agree with that and the fact that this guy got broken up with by his two homies on the same day i never even yeah. heard of such a fucking thing yeah it's crazy i mean this guy's this guy's a nut you know you don't need him. And then I, I totally feel where this guy's coming from too, where he's like, why did I let myself be in this relationship for so long? Yeah. Hey, we all do it. Okay. Yeah. We all do yeah. it. And you know, toxic people can be highly charismatic. There's a reason they're able to keep people in their, in their orbit. So, you know, don't blame yourself for that. Yeah. Just go work on building your own orbit. Yeah. This is good. That was so well said, JT. Thanks, that really man. was, that was good.
I've been there. I love that. Yeah, this this is gonna build character for you. Yeah, you're good. Too. Yeah, you, you just gotta learn to 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 stay stay strong in your in your position. Yeah. You weren't you weren't fucking each other. You don't need the last line. You're fine. Exactly. Need help keeping on because my girlfriend listens a ton. What up, bros? I hope you guys are doing well as the light at the end of this pandemic tunnel gets brighter. Hello to anyone joining you guys in the pod, too. You're probably a freaking rock star and killing life right now. Couldn't be truer. I'm at a pretty difficult split right now. My girlfriend and I are great, but I've lately been having some doubts in my head. She's an awesome girl, genius in the classroom, so fun to rage with, and just a great person overall. The only issue is, I don't think she's for me. We've been dating for a few years, and she's truly one of the coolest girls I've ever met, but lately I just have this feeling in my head that she's not the one I'm going to end up with. She's going to be moving away for the summer for a summer job and possibly looking to get out of our state when she graduates for college. And I'm not sure how she will hold up through all of it, especially with this uncertainty I face. I think so highly of her and don't want to hurt her, but at the same time, I can't just sweep this under the rug. Maybe I'm in the wrong here and I'm totally okay with it, but I just figured the relationship Stoke Lords could steer me in a less confusing path. Thanks for the possible help and much love to you guys for all the content you make. I think if there's any doubt, especially two to three years in, I think it's so brutal making that phone call or or, or part in the ways. But if there is doubt at this point, I think you get out there. And I think that goes back to if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, he doesn't. he's not sure of it right now. I think you break and you feel a lot better after that's done. Yeah. Uh, dude, I'm going through the exact thing right now. Uh, and, yeah, when you know, you know. Yeah. It's, it's uh, if you got, if you have any doubt, you know, it, it's going to suck. Fucking blows, but it's the best decision and, and it'll be the best decision in the long run. So I think if you, if you have doubt, you already know what the answer is. You just gotta, you just gotta, and, and, and you know, it's not, you have a ton of respect for her still. You, 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 you know, it, you, you could, it could be very amicable and, you know, you could be kind of on the same page and, you know, could still have a, a, a friendship afterwards. Yeah. I think, uh, I think it's not even her. This guy's just got some more experiences he needs to get under his belt. Yeah. You know, it's just timing, bro. You just got more life to live before you settle down. So get busy living. Get out there. She'll, she'll, she'll be all right. And you'll be all right with her being all right. So just, just, just break it off, man. And see how that feels. You can always call each other back. You're good. It's always there. Nothing's permanent. Um, all right. But good luck out there. Relation debacle. I recently parted ways with my girlfriend of three years mutually since she's going to school in Manhattan. We're from Philly and it breaks my heart that she wants space during her time at school, though I understand why. I can't help myself from getting jealous of hypothetical situations. Any advice to stay positive and keep this babe thinking I'm not so insecure? She's gnarly and I don't want my, my sad thoughts to soil our relation. Is he with a new babe? No. Yeah, Same babe. Same babe. He doesn't want his insecurity to soil their relation that has ended. Yeah. I would say break contact with her. Go live your life. Go on some dates. Uh, you know, you know, let her give her the space. That's what she asked for. I just think he's overthinking it too. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just don't think there's much to it. I just think he's totally overthinking it. I, I, I was worried about being insecure with someone, with a, someone I was dating and my therapist gave me the best advice. Yeah. I was like, I don't want her to think I'm insecure. She goes, you are insecure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a huge help. I yeah. was like, yeah, I mean, I could spend, you know, 90% of my energy trying to hide this thing that I am, or yeah. I could just get it out there and, and see how it goes. Yeah. You know, it's not worth it to just contain how you're feeling like you're not you're you know you don't seem like you're good at it so just do what you're good at say how you feel and then move on yeah uh and i, I would think i mean they've broken up so you know if you're worried about being insecure I, I, you know trying to talk to her about it and sort of keep up these feelings it, it, that's just gonna torture you you know and then you're gonna come in with the quivering lip you know <laughs> <laughs> what a phenomenal line out of your therapist <laughs> It was unbelievable. That's un. I mean, it was so blunt yet so true. And, and okay, and okay. That's yeah, why yeah. she's there. It was really helpful. Yeah, I love that. Um. Yeah, but dude, I mean, and it's over. Like, yeah, you, you just got to move on. Yeah, just get out there and live your life. Jerk off. Get a water. Yeah, ice. that sounds yeah. like a guy who could use who could jerk off. Yeah, yeah. and get a water ice. That's my Philly. Reference. A what? Water ice. What's that? It's like a snow cone. Oh, that sounds oh, great. Nice. Yeah. You like snow cones? I think they do in Philly. Yeah. 
Yeah, hammer yourself and get a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. All right, love advice for a lady listener. What up, y'all? Lady listener here. As an avid listener of the pod, I always hear dudes writing what their lady was. So I thought I'd mix it up with some gal troubles and solicit advice from the Stoke Lords themselves. So quick overview. I'm 30, not a 10, but also not entirely terrible looking in my own humble opinion. Or this could be a shallow house sitch. Who knows? But just super single. Unfortunately, history has proven that I have absolutely trashed taste in men. By no means am I one of those girls that say there are no good guys out there. Of course there are. I just seem to have a natural proclivity for terrible dudes. Usually because there's an insane sexual chemistry, but it's the same shit every time. Meet, have a fun, steamy, flirty connection, hook up a few times, then fuckboy shit. I usually know these dudes are fuckboys, so I'm never really surprised or bummed when things fizzle. Healthy? No, but this is where we are. Here's my dilemma. I recently hooked up with a dude that I have an insane crush on. Talk in middle school. Listen to sad music to feel this talk in middle school listen to sad music to feel the feels kind of crush he's absolutely perfect like 10 out of 10 would do housewife shit for the primary issue is he's one of my brother's best friends they're actually military buds who serve together so their relationship is next level bff after the hookup he was very weird which caught me off guard because i not, i did not expect fuckboy shit from him we talked about it a little and he said he was just concerned that my bro would find out oh but he got concerned after Recently, he slid back into my DMs to chat about our next hang. Not expressly with just me, but our whole normal crew, including the bro. He hasn't asked for my number, but all I want to do is give him my digits, tell him to come visit me specifically, and then hopefully things can go from there. The question is, is this concern over the bro just a guise for the same old fuckboy shit? Or is it worth pursuing to see if it could actually be something? Lady probs, am I right? Any insight and love for the pod? For love of God, please don't say my name. I don't think that's the end of that. I, I, I really don't. Yeah, I think you think there could be something there? I do. Wow, I, I love do. it. I love the I optimism. Just, I just think that that is definitely not done yet, especially for the fact that he slid back after. Look, I, I don't want to, you know, douse sand on this no. burning fire of optimism, but I don't know. I'm getting fuckboy vibes from this guy. The, the the brother thing, I want your brother to find out? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that is concerning. You know, because that's such an easy... It's like he's got that built-in out. He's got that built-in out. So then he hooks up with you again. Well, I guess this is the key. If you guys hook up again and then he brings up the brother thing again as a way to create space, you're like, "Hey, that ain't flying, okay? Cuz cuz now we're we're repeat business, all right? So you're here. You're here. You can't keep being like, "But your brother." It's like, "No, we're hooking up, okay?" And so and maybe, I don't know. I mean, you want to play it cool, but I wouldn't play it cool with this guy. I'd be like, "Hey, if you're into me, go talk to my brother. Fair. Go talk to my brother. Fair. Or we keep this thing on the down low and we love that kind of, uh, we love that it's a little, it's got a little, you know. Uh, it makes it exciting in yeah, a way. Yeah, it's know? got a you're little, kind of it's got a little something say. on it. Yeah, it's enticing. It's got uh, a little, we're being bad on it. Yep. Yeah, yep. which can be fun. And I don't mind the little we're being bad. No, a little we're being bad can be pretty good yeah you yeah dog. yeah Dude, yeah i yeah I, I think i think maybe saying like go talk to your brother about it i i think i would maybe you know fool around a little bit more no you're right you're right yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the, for just sure. just let you know let things saturate maybe you know you know throw a duraflame on there and just get after it and then and then test the waters yeah that is not the end of that that girl you, you will get a follow-up there's there. more coming yeah there is Hey, so we had a girl write in a couple weeks ago about how she was 22 dating a 29 year old and she was feeling a little insecure because he was more sexually advanced and she had some hangups and uh, we gave advice and she followed up and said that she did have some hangups. She had some stuff that had happened to her that made her hard to be mm -hmm. intimate and her and the guy worked through it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's great. Why you Another do it, cruising. Another cruising. Love to hear it. All right, last one. I'll keep. I'll try and keep it straight. This girl is a part of our squad, by the way. So my ex girlfriend and I recently broke up after dating for over a year. At first, the stoke tank was empty, but then a couple of days ago, she was all over me, and I was digging it. We ended up making out for a while. We talked about it after, and we both confessed we still had feelings for each other. But today, we went to the beach, and I was getting totally mixed signals. Like she didn't want anything to do with me. Minor, not so minor detail. I'm almost f's. I'm almost F's my dog also has feelings for this girl. The whole day at the beach, they were flirting nonstop and this was draining my stoke. So my question to you is what's the best thing to do in this situation? Sorry for the long text, by the way. Thanks in advance. Wait, your bro's hitting on your ex? Is that what's going on? Is that what you're saying? Or is his dog hitting on the ex? <laughs> <laughs> they were flirting nonstop Dude, together. That's a huge yeah. question. And the dog came in. The dog was hitting on her. Yeah. Wait. 
What? Look, <laughs> if if you guys, we mean dog like friend. I do. Yeah. Oh, I, I, for, I, I thought it was. I was like, yeah, canine. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <sighs> if they're not, if it's not working out on the beach, it ain't gonna work out anywhere, dude. That's that the thing. should be the happiest time. I'd, 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 I'd put this. I'd put her in a new category of partner where it's like, okay, this is just someone I see once in a while. And I'd start looking elsewhere for whatever it is you get from people in that dynamic. So I, I, what I'm saying is you got to start dating other people. You got to, you got to, you got to stop putting all your eggs in that basket. She's not reliable. She is not reliable. Sorry, brother. (laughs) Sorry, man. What are you gonna do? And now you're, I mean, the friend thing's a different thing. Here, here's the thing too that friends will do. They'll, especially when you're young, they'll hit on a girl because they don't think you'll have the emotional chutzpah to walk up to them and say, hey man, that hurts my feelings when you do yeah. that. So I would, I would try and find that power within yourself and go up to that dude. Cause what they think, cause they'll be, they'll think that male ego will stop you from doing that. Cause you don't want to acknowledge to another guy that you're threatened by them. But if you are, I would just own it and go up to him and be like, hey, man, yeah, you do have some game. And yeah, maybe you got more game than me. But why do you got to be such an asshole? They, there's not enough people out there. You got to go after a girl. You know, I dated for a year. Like, what the fuck is that in you that you feel you got to do that? Like, there's nothing wrong with blink, being blunt. Sometimes it's better to be blunt from both ways, from both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I think that guy will shrink if you come at him like yeah, that. Yeah, I do too. I think, you know, just get him in the, go, go in the guts. Reverse alien him. Yeah. You'd be like, I can't figure out if you're my boy or my dog. But right now, you're neither. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to talk about you. Yeah. And right you now, know. you're just a guy who ruins the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Was that necessary? No, probably not. Yeah. Chad, who's your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is taxes. I don't know if I talked about this last summer, but... And we, we touched on this prior to the podcast. Maybe it was being recorded. I can't remember, but... I fucked up my taxes big time this year because <laughs> I moved a bracket <laughs> to the point where you get paid and then we moved to the part where you have to pay. And I was like, oh, crap. Yeah. And our accountant was just like, whoa. And I was, you know, it was deep into COVID and I was like, whoa. Um, so my beef is with taxes. It's just like, dude, you didn't have to come at me that hard. Like, you really gave it to me and it's a good life lesson though. I, I was talking to my mom and i was like i was like i was talking to my mom about it. i was like i think my stand-up's improved you know because i'm going through some like life experiences now like before i was kind of like a spoiled prince that pretty no, not very relatable but now i've i fucked up my taxes it's not i'm a spoiled prince who's fucked up his taxes i think that's that's uh that's, that's somewhat more relatable it's kind of like Christmas, what you're going through, to where like when you're young, Christmas, you always Christmas is exciting because you always receive gifts. Right, right. Now I think you're at that stage now where you have to just give gifts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Where Christmas totally. used to be a fun time, taxes used to be a fun time. Yeah. I think that might be gone for you. Yeah, it, I do. Uh, yeah, and and you know what? It's not so much a beef. I was kind of like at the time, I was like kind of like stoked. I'm like, yeah, yeah. nice. That, like going through it a little bit, some financial difficulty. Yeah. That fired me up. So. Love that. Yeah, that's my beef. Uh, I'm going to go my beef right now. I'm a little disappointed with Starbucks. And the reason I'm disappointed with Starbucks is I think they're forcing the drive through I don't mm. think they're ready for the drive through and nor do we expect them to be. Mm-hmm. They tried to adapt to go to a drive through line. That drive through line nowadays at Starbucks, it's a bit of a disaster. It is. It's backed up. It doesn't flow well. And now the patrons that come into the Starbucks that do it by the book are now being affected by that as well to where it's backing things up mm. they always just put one barista out there to dry they just hang them out there to dry where i'm always shocked that there's not numerous baristas for all the stuff that they got to do and the different drinks there are but i i just i love starbucks i just feel like they're forcing the drive through lane um at starbucks nice. oh yeah my beef of the week is uh with the world opening back up I had a moment. I was like, you know what? I don't want the world to open back up. I got used to this. Mm. I felt like I was thriving yeah. in COVID. You know, I got into a groove. I let go of like career pressure because I was like, no one's doing shit. You know what I mean? And then uh, I settled. I, I just was hanging out with my family and like my high school friends. I was working out. I was playing video games. We were doing some of our stuff, but it was like pretty intermittent, you know? Yeah. So it was all, I don't know. It was just nice. And then 
now the world's opening back up and I feel my anxiety coming back. I've been stressed out, you know? And, uh, and you know, I got to learn how to navigate it in the regular world, but I guess I just, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little sad that, that we're done with being kind of, I don't know, stuck in place a little bit. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, LA's fast. Everything comes at you fast. Everything's this, this whole place kind of operates on anxiety. And I'm like, and you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a receptor for that. I, I, I take it all in. So I guess, you know, I just, yeah, I'm just a little bummed that, that we're done. We're done with the lockdown. I'm glad you said that. Cause somebody had to say it. Because okay. you're not wrong. I think a lot of people really did enjoy the lockdown. There was no stress in it. Day to day, you knew what to expect. There was no, you got to do this, this, and this, because you know, and you could always hang your hat on, nobody else is doing anything right now. It was nice. But not many people want to say it, and I'm glad you did. Well, yeah, now if I'm not doing anything, I know everybody else is doing something. There we go. And I, I you know, that's going to, it's going to drag me out of the house. I, I can't be doing nothing when other people are doing stuff. But Respect the hell out of that. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm a little bummed. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Uh, my babe of the week is uh, the stage. Uh, just the general, the stage. <laughs> is that funny? I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see it coming, but I like it. Yeah, the stage. Uh, I like the, uh, I've been doing, uh, been doing a lot of stand-up, and I just love being on stage. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And, um I don't know, man. I was just fired up. Yeah, you know, I did a couple of shows this weekend, and it just fired me up. I was like, I was like, let's go, you know, just getting out there. You know, it was fun, like connecting with people too. You know, especially like the first audience on Saturday was like a little bit older, and it's like making like an old guy laugh. You're just like, hell yeah, dude! Like, I know I could do that. You know, just this old guy is just like, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, I like it. So yeah, that's my babe. Love that. Uh, my babe, I'm gonna go with the with a babe, Courtney um, Kardashian. I I love this thing she's got going with Travis Barker. I love it. Nice. You, is that not just the best relationship going right now? When you see them together on camera, or whenever they're you know uh, shown, they just look like they're just two peas in a pod. Oh, it is. It. I just think it's spectacular. I think it's so fun to watch. They were at the UFC event. They were both sucking lollipops. Was together. that not? I mean, who thinks to do that? They came up with it. Oh, right. Okay. And then the double date they got going with Machine Gun Kelly, and it brings back that kind of punk rock thing. You know, I'll always be a pro Travis Barker guy. Of course. Mm-hmm. And I'm be. just so happy to see that relationship flourish, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to follow down the road. And I think they got Good the legs stuff. to to go the distance. I do too. too. Call and me crazy. And I we've seen too. them go through so many different yeah. relationships. I'm invested. I am too. I'm right there with you. My baby of the week is a uh, UFC fighter Rose Namahunas. She regained the uh, strawweight title. She's the first woman to lose the title and get it back. And uh, you know, I've just been a part of her journey. I've seen her. She came from a hard home life. She found uh, order and fulfillment in fighting. She went through some crazy stuff. You know, she was in the bus when Conor McGregor threw the dolly at the window. Um, and then she she beat Joanna Young Jacek, who looked unstoppable. She beat her twice. And and then she said that the pressure of being champion got to her and that she didn't know how to, like, really find fulfillment after that because she had gotten to the mountaintop and she was like, now what? And then she ended up getting, you know, she was piecing up Jessica Andrade, but she's a strong lady. Jessica Andrade picked her up, dropped her on her dome, and uh, she got knocked out bad. But she built herself back up strong, like Bill the Butcher after Prince Valen mashed his face up good. And uh, she came out last week and she fought Zhang Wei Li, who's a monster. First round, head kicked her unconscious. Got back the title. What I love about Rose Nohan is when she wins, the emotional catharsis she goes through after the W. I mean, she's shaking, she's crying. And then they put the mic in her face and she goes, I'm the best. Yep. She Dude. was even saying it before the fight, too. Yeah. Which I thought was just great. What, what a fucking card. And then her hubby, Pat Barry, is her former UFC heavyweight, is her coach. And, you know, he had tough times. And he they they she got him better. And then, so you just know it's like this, I don't know. It's like these, these people who have, the world has broken and they've made themselves stronger in the broken places. And now they're, you know, she's on top. I, I love it. I love it. I do. I do, too. And just a phenomenal, phenomenal card. It was such a good car. Oh, God. So good. It was just Top excitement to bottom. throughout. You know, and the fans are back. It was good stuff. 
Uh, Chad, who's your legend of the week? Um, yeah, I saw that clip of her saying I'm the best. I'm the best. It's awesome. Yeah. It was beautiful. Uh, my legend of the week is Chad Kroger, the singer. Nickelback guy. It's your namesake. Uh, I was, uh, on Saturday I was going through it a little bit. I was like in my feelings a little bit, you know? Um, I was just, I was just, uh, and I was, I was letting the, I was, the sadness got to me and I was just driving. I was like, I was, just, you know, where it just hits you and you're just like, God, I was, I was, I was pissed. I was like, fuck, you know? <laughs> A lot of it was a cloudy, cloud, cloud. The clouds cover. were. My mom, I was, I was feeling like you, and my mom was like, John Thomas, it's been cloudy for four days. This is, yeah, yeah. it really does affect me. Yeah, I was like, I was like, this is bullshit. What the fuck are you doing to the sky? Um, and so I was in it, and then I put on Why Don't You and I, which he showed me. Oh, the song Why Don't You and I by Chad Kroger and I gotta Santana, and it just it got me right, if only for a little bit. You know, I, I had, a, I had sure. a little. I had a little, I had like five minutes of just like, everything's all good, you know? Thank you, Chad Kroger, for uh, for getting me <laughs> you, through this. You were grappling with that sadness like a beast, too, because oh, you were okay. talking about it. Oh, you yeah. I, I mean? never, you, well, you've taught me that. I never, I never have been one to like talk about it, you know? If I, uh, like, I, I just, but now I'm learning to do that more, and it, it really does help. I but. love seeing you bust that out. Thanks. You were putting it out there. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And you were laughing at it. You were, you were, yeah. You were really working through it. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, it's it feels good to work through that stuff. You're a beast. Yeah, thanks. So are you. You're a beast. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> what about you? You got a legend? Or you got something else? Legend, I would actually go... You had mentioned to me, you know, who make sure you know who your legend of the week is. And I really thought about it. I had my maintenance guy come to my apartment the other day because I wasn't getting hot water. And we got into a conversation, of course, and he was telling me about cold showers. And he's like, look, I'm going to fix the water. I'm going to make sure you have hot water, but just something to consider, I've been taking a cold shower for years. You go into the cold shower, there's a little bit of a feeling out process. You got to get over the hump. If you can get over the hump of the cold shower, stick it out gut it out 30 to 45 seconds after that 45 seconds you will appreciate that shower so much and when you're really going to appreciate the cold showers when you get out of the shower there's a certain refreshment to the cold shower and ever since that maintenance guy come he did fix the water and do have hot water now i will only go cold showers love it i love that yeah i mean you're talking to you a cold uh, shower guy every day it, uh, it, I have an ice bath too. I, I love I love cold he's water. Ice baths in the early a.m. Come on, every day. Yeah. And is there? Do you agree with that thirty to forty five second phase? Oh yeah. Well, you know what I do to get over. It? I I because I've been doing it a while. Is I, I I you know especially if it's like early morning, I'll, I'll get in and just go woo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that that just strips away any kind of fear or pain where you just. <laughs> and then you, and then you just like and then the feeling after where you get out of the shower and you just it's like it's so it's good phenomenal yeah um my legend of the week i'm gonna go with two i got kamara usman who defended his 170 pound title at the ufc event this past weekend put a hell of a knockout on george masvidal jorge masvidal who i think it's the only second time he's ever been dropped and I mean, he put him out. And Jorge Masvidal, in the build-up to the fight, was like, he's got no power. Oh. He hits like he's got pillows in his hands. All he does is wrestle and, you know, do little uh, control cheap shit. And then Usman put him down, dude. And he's just getting better every fight. He, he He's looking like a world beater. I mean, he's looking like he might go after George St. Pierre as the greatest 170 guy of all time. Did you hear Rogan talking about how this guy's got, like, extra bones in his body? Rogan loves talking about that stuff. Oh, He's obsessed with anatomy that way. He loves it. He yeah. loves it. And genetics and... Skull apparently. density of Yoel yes, Romero. Yes, he loves all of that shit. And he makes it... He breaks it down to where it is interesting. Apparently, Usman's got different bones throughout his body. That I believe people, it. Yeah, I, I mean, do he looks He's like a freak. A, he looks like a freak. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, he's just so dedicated and disciplined, and he really delivered. And now, you know, the the the, the rap on him was that his fights were boring, but the three out of his four title fights have been barn burners. Yeah. They've been great fights. So, yeah, just pumped to see someone just coming into their own like that. And then speaking of people coming into their own, we shot some videos this weekend 
with our friend Strider, mm -hmm. you know, legend. He's great. And just watching that guy work. Yeah. You know, watching how dialed in he is, watching how ready he is, and then just, I don't know, he just was killing me. Oh, he's he was best. so funny. Yeah. And he was so locked in. Yeah. It was just a joy to watch. Yeah. It really was. It was joyful. So, yeah, Strider's is my legend of the week. Chad, what's your uh, quote of the week? Uh, I, I've been listening to the Steve Jobs book, which you turned me on to. And my quote comes from uh, that book where it goes, Jobs regarded Raskin as an insufferable theorist, or to use Jobs' more precise terminology, a shithead who sucks. <laughs> Didn't they say he split people into two categories? Yeah. In Jobs' head, you were either... You were either like an artist or a genius or you were yeah. a shithead who sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, yeah. him like you, he he lived in a house with no security, doors open. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. I've heard the not a security guy. Yeah. And on a normal block. I'm not that far in. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I got, I watched The Replacements the other day. Keanu? Are we? Are you kidding me? Come on. What Did a movie. Did you watch The Replacements No, the but I mean, day? I've seen it six million times. So good. About? I love that. And this is, it just hits so hard in the way that Shane Falco delivers it. <laughs> the pain heals, chick dig scars, glory lasts forever. And I kind of realize, I don't really get that. I don't really understand kind of what that means. But the way that Falco delivers that is extraordinary. Yeah. The easygoing leadership of Shane Falco. What about when he comes back at halftime? When Martell's taken over as the QB. So good. And he goes, you're not even a has-been. You're like, it never was or something like that. You'll always be a second. And then he goes, Keanu just gets <laughs> so humbly. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So good. Team gets fired up, dude. And kind of just came into the leader role. Didn't really necessarily He's unassuming. To be leader. Totally. Reluctant. Not, yeah. To where I almost feel like he would be okay with not being the leader. It just turned out that that's the where he was. Something about that movie, man, it, it's unbelievable. He's the kind of QB who if, like, you know, the linebacker Favreau comes in and says, hey, I got a speech today. Can I give the speech today? No you problem. Know, Shane's like, hey, the floor is yours. No problem. Yeah. Also love the fact, love to see a lefty quarterback. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mike Vick. Yeah, love to see a good lefty quarterback. It looks different. It does. The motion looks different. Totally. And I just, I, I, I love it. Great, great, phenomenal film. And that uh, yeah, just fires me up. That is a great movie. The love interest, too. Yeah, oh, she's beautiful. I mean, yeah, she wasn't God. in much else. Yeah, she should have been. Now, where is she now? She was great. I don't know. You wonder where she went, huh? I've been looking for her. They had good I chemistry, still too. Yeah. She's I great. Saw, I saw that movie in theaters. I'm a little older than you guys. Did you really? I saw it in yeah. Wow, that's a movie to see in theaters. Mm -hmm. You got to see a sports movie like that in theaters, and you got to bring a couple of guys with you. You yeah. got to bring your squad. Let them all get fired team. up. Absolutely. Good cast, too. Orlando Jones doing great work. It's a great movie. Looks like a jacked off Roy elephant. from uh, The Office. Oh, is the, the deaf tight end. Man, yeah. He was in shape. Mm -hmm. He was killing in that one. He's the best player on the team. Uh, my quote is uh, from uh, the book Normal People. So I read Sally Rooney's other book, Conversations with Friends. You know, I thought it kind of glorified being a, a neurotic ass a bit too much, but I think this one is a little better. These characters are, I'm a bit more sympathetic to, towards them. They're, I think they're just better people. And I think, I think she still has the same level of insight, but... It's a little easier to, to follow along with these people. But uh, one of the characters, Peggy, is, um, you know, she's kind of a wild card and she's speaking on men. And she goes, generally, I find men are a lot more concerned with limiting the freedoms of women than exercising personal freedom for themselves. So that was very provocative. Mm. I, think, I think that can be true. You know what I mean? I think you, you, see, you, you see guys and we're like, yeah, we want to do whatever we want. But then you put a bold woman in your face and sometimes you're like, hey, I got to tamp this down. What is that? What is that? How many, just out of curiosity, how many books do you read a, a month? Uh, I don't know, it varies, but probably like one or two. Good for you. I would love to be there. I really would. I'm in a book club now. Are you? So I'm in a book club with my friend Kat, and what we do is we're going to bring a different third. It's always us two, and then we have a different third member for each book. So we rotate through different editions. Uh, you got your shit editions. together, JT. That's nice. You Thanks, do. man. Yeah, you oh, really I appreciate do. that. Yeah, well, I'm a little behind on the book. We were supposed to meet last <laughs> Thursday, but I was struggling. But I'm almost done with it now. Yeah, it's a great read. And, uh, yeah, you know, and then the thing with fiction, you know, it changes the way your brain works. It rewires your head. You start talking and thinking like the author. Yeah. And that, it's, it's kind of a nice place to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely recommend it. Uh, Chet, what's your uh, phrase of the week for getting after it? 
uh my friend is week for getting after it and i didn't tell you about this one so this is um i want because i wanted it to fly off the dome yeah uh basically phrase the week for like what do you what do you say for getting the party started kind of thing you know so my phrase of the week for getting after it and i'm just letting mine fly off the dome i didn't plan yeah. it my phrase of the week for getting after it is um we're gonna need duct tape Ooh. that sounds kind of uh, no 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 it doesn't sound like a murder kidnap thing at all okay no, it sounds like this night could go in a lot of different directions. I, I was thinking we have to fix like the wall because we're going to break it. That's yeah. what my head is. Yeah. We're breaking shit. You know, we might have to put the carburetor back together. Exactly. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. same with, do you have extra sheetrock? Ooh, nice. I like something that. Something deep like that. Wow. Like, are you guys all good on sheetrock? That's a great one. That might yeah. be the best one we've ever had. Yeah. Dude, I got like it I, off I, the dome. I got to tell you, you're. Uh, I think you've adapted to the Beast Bays and Legends, or you, you've embraced it probably better than any guest we've ever he had. He didn't even need a prompt. Most no. of the time, I got to go, "Who's yours?" Yeah. I would, I would hit you, and then I just looked at you, yeah, and you had it. Also, too, I could see it in your shoulders, to <laughs> where when you give a little bit of this, I know. Okay, go ahead, Rob. I don't even got to see the eyes. I've been looking at your shoulders the whole podcast. That's unbelievable. That's where the punches are coming <laughs> yeah. from. Yeah, and, and I got to tell you, boys, I, I, I mean it. Huge fan, as you know. And like oh, I said, thanks. we had to keep those vibes going, and uh, I, I think there's more to come. I, I, I agree. I, I think this is a never-ending story in a way. I do yeah. too. And I'm eager to, to see the next couple chapters. I uh, my uh, phrase of the week for getting after Dana White, leader of the UFC, was on the Bill Simmons podcast, and Simmons is like, so Amanda Nunes, who's like the 145 pound champ, and 135 as well. He's like, uh, when did you know there was something about her that was different? Like, what was it about her that you know really made you think, okay, there's a spark here, there's something there. Dana White just takes the beat. He goes, she hits like a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it sounded like Dana White. Too. Really? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I think that was, it just cracked me up. I thought, it, I think everyone listening thought he was going to have this, you know, like, oh, you know, I was in a, in a press conference and I saw her say this thing and I was like, oh, she's got an ad. No, he's like, she hits like a dude. That's phenomenal. So hit like a dude. Yeah. Boys, this is fantastic. It's Robbie. Good stuff. We got, we got to just keep this. We got to make it a a, a thing. I tell you, I, I love you, boys. Anytime you want me up here, you know that. Well, I think it's going to be real soon. Yeah. Good Say vibes. the word. I'll be ready for you guys. This was, was truly phenomenal. Little Casablanca. This is the start of a beautiful friendship. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go. Got to hit the links. Anytime. Yeah, we got to golf, dude. I think the content we could get us on the golf course, you two, me and Joey cold cuts. I think it's game over. I think it shocks the world. We got to get out there. I really do. I think it would be sensational. You know what's crazy about that too? I think it'll be fun, but I I think it'll, I think it'll be good content. But I also I can't imagine not being relaxed with you. I think I'm gonna really settle into it. Yeah, totally. I'll let you. you you'd be taking it just shot by shot. I also think it'd be the best golf you've ever played. Wow, I'd love to have that. I'd love be that. right there with I'm you due boys. for a good round. Yeah, love that. All right. Well, thanks so much, man. Dude, thank you guys for having me. Dude, I appreciate you, boys.